Go back to the first slides, ma. Yes, Kana. You are so good can to you go, see, sir? Yeah, you are perfectly fine. You please unshare now. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. sir is joining, ma. Doctor Na. Yes, sir. Sir will join little late, sir, by around eight thirty like that, sir. Okay, 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 okay. You please unshare your screen, yes. Sundar. Now. So I have, have I unshared, sir? Now. Yes, you are done. Thank you, Shrinivasan sir. Good evening, yes. sir. Thank you, sir. Good evening, sir. Lights. Lights. Dr. Neha, good evening. Can you try sharing your PowerPoint, Kana? Yes, sir. Yep. I think Kaila Share is already joined. Yes. Dr. Neha, your connectivity is good in your place? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Please try share your PowerPoint. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, is it visible? Great. Now, if you have challenge, I will ask Sundar to go first, then you can present second. What system are you using? Are you presenting from a phone? No, sir. It's a laptop. Mac. Okay. Uh, sir, video ni aata hai. See? Video ni aata hai. Ah, sir. Zoom me, sir. Good evening, sir. Daniel, sir. Daniel, sir. तो ये मेरे को उसमें डिसेबल क्या? Back to back to India. Yes sir, yes sir. Doctor Neha, don't worry. You take your time. I will. I think you are okay. Yes. Make it full screen, Kana. Yes sir. Press the full screen menu. Yes sir. Okay. I think we are already beyond eight o'clock. So let us quickly go on without wasting much of our time. So today we have. A couple of new faculties who are uh, joining us, and uh, we have our uh, eminent Dr. Nishikan Gujar, who has already been with us from Alamin, and uh, we have Professor Kailash Charokar, uh, PCMS and RC Bhopal, and uh, Professor N. N. Das from uh, Downtown Hospital Guwahati will be joining us shortly. I warmly welcome Dr. Neha Tamarkar and uh, Dr. Sundar Nathan for presenting the case today, and uh, we also warmly welcome our uh, sitting in-house faculty. 
uh, have professor jailal sir and uh, shrinivasan sir already the others are expected to join shortly so without much ado we will have uh, dr neha's presentation up for the faculty just to remain the student may be allowed to present through the history without stopping at the end of the history you can again definitely go back slide after slide and ask questions or give your opinion and comments and of course should the other faculty also want in please uh, chip in and give the comments so this each case will have one hour time so at the end of history discussion the candidate moves to uh, clinical finding the initial thing will be discussion will be around uh, what they are going to work about and uh, how to manage the patient then you can take them to recent advances and other areas so i would request the faculty to share the correct answers if the student is not able to answer so this will be like a teaching format so the more uh, time of uh, teaching if the candidate stumbles or something i request the faculty to help them out so with that i uh, can i uh, neha you go to the first slide you are playing with slides yeah so neha you go first i please introduce yourself you are unit chief you are head of the department and uh, I thank Dr. Nitin sir for uh, kindly permitting uh, the team from Bhopal to present a case today. Thank you very much. Good luck to you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I am Dr. Neha Tandekar. Uh, I am today. I am present for uh, breast lung. Case presentation on a breast lung under the guidance of Dr. Kailash Sharoka sir. Uh, Kanna sir, good evening, sir. So can I stop? Oh, you are fine to go. Please, please, please. It's a very senior most faculty. You just wish them. You, it is not to stop you. Please go ahead. History. A sixty-year-old lady presented to the OPD. Uh, she was a resident of Siraj, Vidisha. Madhya Pradesh. She is a house housewife by occupation, from low socioeconomic status, with a complaint of breast lump in right breast since one month, swelling in the right armpit in ten to fifteen since ten to fifteen days. History of presenting illness. The patient was apparently all right a month before. One fine day in the morning, in a subtle way, she noticed a painless lump of small lemons. Size in her right breast. Since then, it was increasing and progressed to current size of approximately four to five centimeter. In a gap of fifteen to twenty days, she felt another lump of pea nut size in right armpit, which is increasing its size. There is no history of other swelling in opposite breast or axilla. No history of nipple discharge, trauma, radiation exposure in the past. Chest pain, cough, hemoptysis. No any constitutional symptoms like weight loss or decreased appetite. Pain in abdominal jaundice. No history of lower backache. Pain in limbs. No history of headache, vomiting, or weakness of any limb. Past history. She was a known case of hypertension. Hypertension since one year, which was controlled on single drug medication. There were no history of any chronic illness, any previous surgery in the past, tuberculosis, diabetes mellitus, and asthma. Family history. Uh, there was no history of breast cancer in the first degree relatives from the maternal side. No history of BRCA malignancies in the family, like ovarian, prostate, pancreatic, and large bowel malignancies in first degree relatives in family members. Menstrual and obstetric history. Menarche was at the age of twelve years. Menopause at the age of forty-nine years. Marital at the age of sixteen years. First child at the age of twenty-three years. Second child at the age of twenty-eight years. She has two children by normal vaginal delivery. No history of any previous abortion. All breastfed by for minimum of two years. There was no history of intake of any birth control pills or hormone hormone replacement therapy. Has normal menstrual cycles of twenty eight days plus minus two days. Personal history: 
she was vegetarian by diet normal sleep pattern she has normal bowel and bladder habit non alcoholic no history of tobacco consumption in any form and no known allergies my case summary a 62 years old post menopausal lady presented with painless lump in right breast which progressed from small lemon size to a size of 4 to 5 cm in duration of last one month she also noticed another swelling in right axilla of period size since 10 to 15 days there is no history of nipple discharge there were no constitutional symptoms there is no history of significant chronic illness in the past or any associated risk factors of her malignancy she has mild controlled hypertension there is no family history of malignancy general physical examination uh my patient was conscious oriented to time place yeah, person before, uh, yeah before we go for the examination we have to ask something in the history also isn't it yes sir can you can you go to your first slide yes sir So the patient has a breast lump in the right breast. Yes, sir. Is that a correct sentence? You know, just I am asking. Do you think it is the correct sentence? Uh, breast lump in the right breast. Ah, uh, lump in the right breast, sir. Yes, just say lump in the right breast, you know, rather than saying the breast lump in the right breast. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Go to the and next. And more particular. More particularly, you must say the where right lump breast is a large area. Whether yes. you can see there's an upper the location of the lump also, it will be better to mention there. Yes, sir. So, can you go to the next slide? Next slide. Yes, sir. So, did you tell anything about that? Whether this lump was associated with the pain or fever or any other symptoms? Uh, and, so and, how did, uh, and how did she notice that? Uh, so it was a uh, so, uh, suddenly a day she noticed that the uh, uh, lump in her breast, which was painless, and it was uh, slowly growing. So was your patient carrying out the regular breast examination? Uh, no, sir. Breast self examination? No, sir. She didn't know about the uh, examination of the breast. Okay, she did not know about that. Okay. Right. Okay. Go to the next slide. Yes, sir. Now you have written somewhere that no history of any operation in the past. Yes, so sir. what were the things you were interested to know about that? Uh, sir, I mean, uh, there was no previous surgery of breast which was uh, happened in the past. There were no scar marks on the, uh, on the breast. So if there is a surgery in the past is there on the breast, yes, what, sir. Is, what you want to know? Uh, sir, any uh, previous, for any benign lesion uh, or pre-malignant right. lesion, so if she says that I had an operation at the age of 20 years for a fibroadenoma. Yes, sir. So what do you want to know in that? No, sir. It was a benign lesion. So, uh... no, so what is your interest to know about the benign lesion? That's what I'm asking. That if somebody had undergone a surgery for the breast and it was reported as a benign lesion, so, what do you want to know in that? Mm. You know any pre malignant condition or chance of having the higher chance of having a malignancy in a benign disease? Uh, sir, uh, sir, pyloid tuber can be converted into a malignant. Okay. Has the chances of conversion to a okay, so philot's tumor? Philot's tumor is okay. Yeah. Any other? Any other? Specifically for that, you know, very specific. 
Have you heard the name ADH? ADH. <clears throat> yes. Atypical ductal hyperplasia. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, so that's a definite risk factor, isn't it? Yes, sir. Typical ductal fiber is a definite risk factor. Yes, sir. And then you can you go to the next slide? You yes, said sir. that you are only interested in the maternal side, isn't it? Yes, sir. But if the father had a breast cancer, does that make the lady prone or not? Uh, yes, sir. So any family is to whether it is maternal or paternal, you know? Both are having the high risks for that. Yes, sir. So, so can you tell what are the absolute high risks for the breast cancer? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, advancing age. Yes. Uh, obesity. Obesity, absolute. I'm asking, you know, there are two types. One are the absolute types, another the relative types. Yes, sir. What are the things which are there in the absolute type? Sir, a uh, hyperestrogenic state. Uh, state. Absolute means non modifiable, ma. Okay. Non modifiable, yes. Family, uh, uh, sir, uh, positive family history, genetic mutation, uh, uh, BRCA1 and BRCA2. Right. Yes. Uh, sir. Being a female itself. Yes, a female itself. So there are only five or six absolute risk factors, isn't it? Yes, sir. So age of the patient is itself a risk factor. Yes, sir. Okay, somebody already had a breast cancer on one side. She is likely to have the breast cancer on the opposite side. Yes, sir. Family history is there. Yes, BRCA sir. one two is there. Yes, sir. And as, as I told you about ADH, atypical ductal hyperplasia. Yes, so sir. these are supposed to be the absolute risk factors. Absolute risk factor. You understand what is the meaning of that? Yes, sir. Which are non modifiable. No, they are not modifiable, but. When you say it is the absolute risk factor and when you say it's the relative risk factors. If the risk factor is more than two times, that is the absolute. Yes, While sir. all others which are there, nulliparity, lactation, you know, obesity, smoking, cigarette, alcoholism, all those are the relative risk factors. And there the risk factor is less than two. It yes. is slightly more than one, but it is less than two. Yes, sir. Okay. And as Dr. Jalal told you about the modifiable risk factors and the non-modifiable risk factors. So all these absolute risk factors are the non-modifiable. Yes, sir. Well, the relative risk factors which are there, and you, know, you can stop the smoking, you know, you may not gain the weight. All those are the modifiable risk factors. Yes, sir. Okay. Right. Yeah. Neha, you have mentioned that there is no similar swelling in opposite rate. Right? Yes. Rest. What is the significance of this? Uh, Go to the that... previous slide. Yes, sir. In negative history. Hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, no other swelling in. Sir, okay. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. Sir, we palpated the breast as a whole. Uh, there were no other swelling or lump palpated in other quadrants of the breast or the opposite breast or opposite axilla. What is clinical significance of this? Sir, metastasis. Other than metastasis, which breast malignancy is bilateral? Uh, you, you, you have two types, no? Ductal and lobular, and which you think it is a bilateral, you can get. Which breast malignancy? Sir, uh, sir uh, there are two types papillary and tubular. Papillary. No, 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 no. no ductal no. and lobular. Which is more? Lobular is more prone for bilateral. Lobular. That is the risk. Bilateral. Lobular. Multicentral. And, uh, Multicentral. And, uh, and there is nothing. Papillary and tubular are all mostly single, but only the medullary carcinoma, you have medullary type, you have some um, bilateral type. You can have. Not the papillary and tubular. Yes, sir. And lobular yes. carcinoma. Yes, sir. Neha, what are the types of nipple discharge? 
सर देर डिपल डिस्चार्ज मे बी ऑफ ब्लडी ग्रीनिश और सीरस सीरस एंड ब्लडी आर मोर कॉमनली सीन इन कार्सिनोमा ब्रेस्ट सर ब्लडी डिस्चार्ज ब्लडी डिस्चार्ज आर अगेन अप टू टाइप्स फ्रेश ब्लड एंड अल्टर ब्लड जी सर fresh blood in which condition and altered blood in which condition we we'll get sir fresh blood in a duct ductal papilloma okay so it's a right. it is a benign condition benign it's condition, benign condition. Okay. and, and altered uh, blood uh, carcinoma why there is altered blood in case of malignancy this is commonly asked pg question yes sir Because due to malignancy, there is a obstruction and blood get stagnated. That's why there is a altered blood in case of malignancy. Okay, proceed. What is the significance of trauma here? You have asked the trauma and radiation exposure. Yes, sir. Who do you want to ask about the trauma? Ah, uh, sir. Ah, uh, because of trauma, ah, uh, there can be fatty necrosis. Ah, uh, which, which can turn. Which into... type of trauma? Which type of trauma will produce fatty necrosis? It is not a single trauma. Yes. One time incident that will produce only mm -hmm. hematoma. You must have a multiple repetitive short term uh, stress on a particular area. Even when the when we are a metallic the bra with the metallic clips, that if it is tightly pressing on that area, that area is more prone. So this trauma history it is not a one time fall or one time injury. It is a consistent passive, the continuous uh, the pressure effects on that particular area. Can can you tell the mechanism of fat necrosis? Uh, why? Why is from where do you get the fatty acid? Where do you get the calcium? There must be a soap formation should be there, no? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, sir, uh, due to uh, trauma, the, there will uh, there will be a sign of inflammation and the release of uh, cytokines, due to which there is a further necrosis of the fat. Is it a necrosis you are getting there? This is you don't get much necrosis there. Just the fatty acid is coming that is interacting with the calcium which is coming out. It from a solidification is happening. Yes, a non-separative uh, okay. fatty necrosis inflammation. Yeah. Nega nipal discharge, which is you you are going. What else you really ask for in nipal discharge? One is speaking. You said the. Type of nipple discharge. And if you say another one is, is it a single duct or a multiple duct? Yes, sir. Why it's important? Uh, sir. Uh, which is physiological? Which is pathological? So single duct uh, discharge, maybe uh, physiological, but multiple du duct discharge. The reverse is trauma. Reverse multiple duct discharge. Multiple duct discharge is physiological. Single duct is. Pathological. Pathological. Okay. Yes. Sir. So that is very important. So it's the same. If we have a discharge. You should ask. Is it a? You should. You can see it, that. You will see only the inspection. You can squeeze. Otherwise, the patient will not be able to tell whether it's single or multiple duct. Yes. Sir. You are asked the history of pain. Pain in the abdomen. Ma. What is the relationship? Why do you want to ask the pain abdomen? Uh, sir. It's a sign of, I mean, a metastasis. If there is a metastasis, there will be Where? metastasis a... in the liver will cause a pain. No, sir. No, sir. For certain things, and the postgraduate, when you are asking, then why you want to ask that question? And you must be very particular. It can yes. produce when in these advanced stages, but not to start with the pain abdomen, which will not be considered as a sign of a. Uh, uh, Yeah, but metastasis. A patient comes with a complaint of pain abdomen. You have other reasons to suspect more than thinking in terms of the carcinoma or the secondary is there. Yes, sir. Lower Can back. Yes, sir. You want? Uh, sir, yeah. breast metastasizes firstly to bone to the lumbar uh, vertebra. That's why. How? Think... Why it goes to the lumbar vertebra? Uh, sir, through post uh, posterior intercostal. Uh, Versus how many posterior the, there are how many posterior intercostal veins are there um so each intercostal space will have one yes sir 
So what they do? How the intercostal vein reaches to the lumbar vein? So through Batson's plexus. What is Batson's plexus? So it is a supply of uh, this arterial supply. Uh, arterial supply. Batson's plexus is the venous. Venous supply. So what is Batson's plexus means? So where it is existing? It's a paravertebral venous plexus from the, the lower part of the skull to the sacrum. It's a continuous valvular structure. No? Normally, the posterior intercostal vein directly do not go there. It forms the acega system. Yes. There's another vein which goes to the basin plexus. So you must, so each, when you are talking about the secondaries, where it goes, you must know the route and how it goes, how it's put. Don't, just like an undergraduate, we can't go ahead and say it's a basin plexus through that lumbar vein. Okay, good, good one. Yes. So other faculties, please. Kailash sir wanted to ask something. Kailash sir. No, I wanted to give her a clue a little bit, but then she catched up on and uh, I'm thankful to, grateful to faculties who they supported her. And, uh, no, she... sir, no, sir. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Headache, vomiting, why do you ask my weakness of limbs? Uh, I said, uh, sir, in malignant uh, diseases, there is a uh, weight loss or a weakness which de uh, develops. No, no, weakness is different from the tiredness or fatigue. Fatigue. You ask uh, headache, uh, vomiting, why? Uh, sir, due to metastasis, uh, there may be headache because uh, metastasis of breast goes to brain leptomeninges, which can cause headache. Okay. Yeah, go to okay. the next slide. Okay, ma'am, go ahead. You, you can come to the clinical examination. Yes, sir. No, menstrual history over, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, Ajay, can I, sir? No. It's okay. Now. I think you can go to the examination now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. General physical examination. My patient was conscious, oriented to time, place, and person. She was average built with adequate diet. She was well hydrated and obese with BMI of 31 kg meter square. There were no pella, clubbing, ectorus, pedal edema, no cervical lymphadenopathy. Her vital parameters were normal, uh, with pulse rate of 66 per minute, regular rhythm, normal volume. Blood pressure was 130 mm of FG, measured in left arm in supine position. She was afebrile to touch, and uh, respiratory rate was 18 per minute, bilateral airway was clear. Now, local regional examination. Now, in, in this patient, they say obese. Is there is any significant on that? Yes, sir. Obesity is a risk factor for the uh, carcinoma breast. How? Why? Uh, sir, hyperestrogen uh, adipose cells uh, secret estrogen. So uh, it leads to hyperestrogenic state. Adipose tissues secretes estrogen. It doesn't secrete estrogen. No, sir. The peripheral. There will be conversion of the estradiol into estrogens. Yes, sir. So there is a transformation is taking only on the postmenopausal. The premenopausal obesity is not a very significant because at that time it is the ovary is going to secrete the all the estrogen. Now see so the ovary is not functioning in the postmenopausal. The only source of estrogen you are going to get from the peripheral conversion. So yes, as sir. you got more and more obese, there is a more chances of it's your peripheral conversion of the estrogen. Go ahead. Yeah, can you go to the last slide? Yes, sir. No, not the case, somebody. The, your first slide of the genus of the examination. You said adequate diet. What is that? Yeah, that is that is. Uh, sir, normal mixed diet she takes. Uh, sir, her you're examining, you're examining the patient, no? 
Yes, sir. It's not a history. Now you are examining the patient now, is it? Yes, sir. So nothing like the adequate diet, you know? Yes, sir. Direct examination. And then in the general examination, you have only no cervical lymphadenopathy. Is that a part of the general examination? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, generally, we... No cervical lymphadenopathy. What is the part of the general examination? No so, uh, generalized lymphatic you know? Generalized lymphatic. No generalized okay. lymphatic. You know? Right? It's a con inclusive of all. Yeah. And then you have written a febrile to touch. What is that? Uh, sir, uh, patient was a febrile. Uh, she has no fever or constitutional symptoms. No, but by touching, you take the temperature? Yes, sir. You have written okay, right to touch. a right to touch. Yes, sir. So, to touch is only when you are doing the local examination, you know, whether the temperature is local temperature raised or not. Yes, sir. But here in the general examination, a febrile means either you are taking the oral temperature or you are taking the rectal temperature or you are taking the temperature in the axilla. Yes, sir. Okay, nothing like the touch here. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. Okay, go ahead with the ear. Yeah, next slide. Yeah, go ahead with that. Yeah. Local regional examination. Of Exam what? Of breast, sir. No, so, so, always you mentioned that. It is not just the local regional or local examination. You have got to say examination of the breast or the, the complex. Don't try to say local regional examination. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Examination was done with explained verbal consent and privacy in a well illuminated clinical room. Uh, with uh, in a uh, patient was in sitting position, leaning forward with arm position as necessary, and finally in supine position. Inspection: nipple areola complex of both breasts symmetrical and similar in size and position. There were no visible nipple discharge. However, the upper outer quadrant of the right breast revealed a stretched skin surface overlying a visible protuberance. Examination of the right breast. Shape was asymmetrical. Nipple and areola, normal in position, size, shape, surface. There were no retraction and no discharge. Skin over the protuberance visible in the outer, upper, and lower quadrant. Dimplings present. There were no scar mark, no engorged veins or pigmentation, no any signs of inflammation visible. There were no ulceration, no pausy or orange. No any satellite nodules. Remaining breast appearance was normal. There were no edema of ipsilateral arm, ax axilla supraclavicular fossa, upper limb. There were no visible lump in the axilla supraclavicular and upper limb. Inspection of the breast with the arm breast over the head. Symmetry of nipple areola complex was maintained. Dimpling over protuberance became more prominent. When we did the inspection with the patient sitting and leaning forward, right breast demonstrated more fall forward. Inspection with the patient sitting and pressing her waist with the hands, there were no visible change observed over the lump. Examination of the left breast and axilla was normal on inspection. Now palpation. Palpation of the left breast and axilla was normal in consistency. Palpation of the left right breast. No temperature difference was felt over the breast lump. It was non-tender. A lump of 5 into 3 cm palpable predominantly in the upper outer quadrant and encroaching into the outer lower quadrant. It was hard in consistency all over. Surface was irregular, margins ill-defined, fixed to skin. Lump does not move independent of the breast tissue, was immobile, but moves along with the breast tissue, fixed to the, it means uh, suggestive of fixed to the breast tissue. Neither fixed to chest wall, nor to the underlying pectoralis major muscle, pectoralis fascia, and serratus anterior muscle. This was a uh, sketch diagram of right breast clinical examination. Regional lymph node examination. There were two groups of lymph nodes palpable. Central group 
two separate lymph nodes approx 2 into 1 cm in size which was non tender hard in consistency but mobile no supraclavicular lymph node palpable systemic examination was normal now summary of the clinical examination on clinic uh, on examination a lump of 5 into 3 cm palpable in the upper outer quadrant of right breast irregular surface margins ill defined non tender hard in consistency fixed to skin and breast tissue neither fixed to chest wall nor to the underlying muscles central group of lymph node was palpable which was non tender hard in consistency and was mobile so can i move forward Yeah, there are so many positions to examine the breast, isn't? Yes, sir. So if you are given a choice that you have to examine this patient in only one position, which one you will choose? Uh, sir, a uh, breast with arms raised over the head. So all the three what you have mentioned is not true, except other than that. The answer is other than the all the three positions which you have said. Not falling for power, sitting, falling forward, or raising the arm. Are supine. Sir, supine position. No, all the three is not. If you have to examine this patient only in one position, the best position will be either a. semi recumbent position or a supine position with a pillow underneath that particular shoulder so if we are examining the right breast a pillow underneath the right shoulder okay so that is the best position to examine the breast and yes. what are the various ways to examine the breast how do you examine the what are the various ways to palpate the breast in a diet clock method sir yes what is that dial, dial clock uh by uh palpating the breast you know uh, starting from the 12 o'clock and then uh, moving circularly in uh, in the whole breast so it is a clockwise you know yes sir you have to palpate the breast the best position is to palpate the breast in the clockwise way clockwise fashion now when you are inspecting the chest wall you said that there is no fullness in the axilla supraclavicular fossa and upper limb what other fullness you want to see on inspection can you go to the first slide this way yes yeah this this slide yeah yeah so you see the axilla supraclavicular and upper limb no visible lump uh, you want to see any other area Sir, uh, yes, we have a supraclavicular. There is also infraclavicular. Yes, sir. Do you know the important the infraclavicular fossa, infraclavicular nodes? Yes, sir. So that also you have to tell. Exactly. Yes, sir. Yeah, and then even you have to tell about the parasternal also. Yes, sir. There may fullness in the parasternal area. Yes, sir. What does that mean if there is a fullness in the parasternal area? Um. Uh, Sir, so internal memory lymph nodes. Yes, internal memory. Maybe involved. Yes. So that is also a part of the inspection. If you are telling about that, and then here, see, on inspection, you are telling everything you are told about the right breast, which is the abnormal one, and then in the last, you are telling about the left breast. Yes, sir. It has to be always opposite. Yes, sir. Okay, the normal thing has to be told first, and then the abnormal. Yes, sir. I think uh, Neha, you mentioned it in the beginning about yes, left. Sir. Forgot yes, to sir. mention. No, she has written that. You know, she has yes, written sir. there, but in the last on the inspection, yes, on the palpation, she started telling that. But on inspection, she was telling about that. You know, in the opposite way. Yes, sir. And then you in said the that no temperature difference. What is? What does that mean? No temperature difference. Uh, sir. Uh, sir. Uh, uh, some just uh, in the inflammatory. Uh, 
No, no. What is the meaning of that? That I know that inflammatory or it will be. But what is the meaning of no temperature difference? What you say here? Sir, uh, no temperature difference. Uh, we uh, saw the temperature of the uh, remaining breast with the lump. Yeah, I understand that. But what you have to say, that is not the correct sentence which you are using. No temperature difference. You have to, to say that local temperature not raised or local temperature normal, whatever you want to say. Okay, not the temperature difference. Local yes. temperature not raised. Yes, sir. Okay. And then you said fixity to the pectoral fascia. How did you know about that? Uh, See, you have written somewhere. Yeah, you have not fixed to the fascia. muscle and the pectoral fascia. Yes, sir. Um, so how did you say that? Uh, sir, uh, when uh, we uh, position the uh, patient. With the uh, inspection of the patient uh, sitting and pressing her waist, with the uh, inspection with the patient sitting and leaning forward, her right breast falls more forward. Well, that is a quite uh, unusual finding. We are looking for a. Uh, uh, tell about the pectoral fixation, is it? A, how, do you, uh, how do you tell about whether it is fixed to the pectoral muscle or not? Whether it is fixed to the pectoral muscle uh, or fixed to the chest wall? So when we move the breast tissue, the uh, lump was moving uh, along with that the, is the breast tissue. tissue you no, know? you, know, you have used certain word. I think where is that? Can you go yeah, to the next? Slide? Yeah, go to the next slide. Are you there, Neha? Yeah, she has mentioned like pectoral fascia and serratus anteriors. No, I think we have lost her. Isn't she has? Is she there? Neha, are you there? No, I think she is. There is some net issue. Yeah, net issue is there. She is reconnecting. Sir. Okay, okay. So, Dr. Jaila, sir, you are back from USA? Yes, sir. Back. No, no, I'm back. I'm in Chennai today, but not in Kenya. Okay, okay, okay. Right. Congratulations. No, sir. Meetings are special. Are you? Okay. Dr. Nishikant, from which place you are? Vijapur, sir. Alamin Medical College, Vijapur, Karnataka. Okay, okay, right. Okay. right. Nice to meet you, sir. She is presenting with uh, one of the students there sitting there, sir. She will take other system. Sir, uh, what shall we do, sir? Should we go for the other case now? We'll I think Kaila Star is connecting with her. Okay, you know, uh, wait, sir, wait, is this, uh, sir, wait, wait for a minute. One of the students has joined in the same room. Actually, he has a system. I told her to come on to her system. She has a presentation on that system also as a backup. Oh, okay, sir, welcome. We'll wait for a minute, otherwise we'll take the next case. No, no, we can we can wait for a minute, sir. Definitely. Yeah. We can. We'll wait for one minute would be the deadline. <laughs> Jalal, sir, in Chennai, sir. 
Yeah, I, I mean Chennai. Today morning we came. Yeah? Okay. Tomorrow morning we'll go. But uh, Sunday will be. I will be again back for the Kadalur meeting. Okay. Sunday I will be again back in Chennai. Okay. 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 So you are coming on. Program is confirmed. Yes, sir. Uh, I met Jackin today. In fact, I went to GH. Yeah, there is laser program. Is there? Ah, yes, sir. your 31st program yes sir i am as planned sir so i'll be arriving to trivandrum by that last flight that timing alone i'll share with you sir okay and leaving on uh, the 355 or 330 flight from tokyo that's the plan that's a bit early so the, i think that is the last flight no sir from tokyo you can catch a flight from trivandrum what time is that sir 8 o'clock let me check sir let me check Oh, sir kaila sir uh, is she having some challenge sir we can as well complete the case after the uh, next case is discussed yes, sir, sir what shall we do sir yes, yes sir please sir okay right um, faculty and students please bear with us i think uh, we have some challenges with uh, the candidate to present the thing with connectivity is or some issues so we move on to dr sundar das uh, dr sundar are you with us yes sir I will okay. share this uh, now. Uh, please start your PowerPoint and uh, share your uh, presentation. Uh, I think, uh, yes. Professor, uh, your your faculty is there, no matter, Doctor N N Das. Yes, sir. Sir has joined, sir. Sir, good evening, sir. Okay. I think, sir, it's in mute mode. Sir, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Yes, We'll start the process. Sundar, you please introduce yourself and start your presentation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good evening to all the respected teachers and colleagues. I am Dr. D. Sundar Nadan. I am the DNB Surgery uh, Trainee in Downtown Hospital, Guwahati, Assam. Today, I'll be presenting a case of obstructive jaundice. Moving on, uh, my patient is a 55-year-old male, a farmer from Nepal. Came with complaints of yellowish discoloration of eyes and urine for three months and pain abdomen since one month. On elaborating the history, patient was apparently normal three months ago. Following which he developed yellowish discoloration of eyes and urine. It was gradually onset and progressive, associated with pale colored stools and itching over the body. History of loss of appetite and weight since three months. He told that he had a loss of ten kgs within three months. And. Uh, history of pain in the upper abdomen okay. since one month which was okay, on the back off the front of back no aggravating factors and uh, it was relieved on analgesics and there was no history of fever malaise chills and rigor no history of nausea or vomiting no history of postprandial fullness no history of hematemesis or melina no history of all and there was no history of any distant metastasis There was no, no no known history of comorbidities and past history. No history of major ailment or surgery in the past. Personal history: patient is non-vegetarian, not a smoker or alcoholic. And family history: no history of similar illness in family members. Treatment history: no history of uh, blood transfusions in the past or chronic drug intake in the past. So, summarizing my history: a uh, 55-year-old male came with history of progressive jaundice since three months, associated with pale stools and itching, loss of appetite and weight. since 3 months and dull aching pain in upper abdomen since 1 month uh, so this history is suggestive of obstructive jaundice possibly of malignant etiology what could be the diagnosis if the patient is having painless intermittent jaundice Painless intermittent jaundice could be a malignant etiology involving the periampulary region, sir. Periampulary carcinoma. 
suppose patient is having fever with jaundice what could be the etiology jaundice with a fever, fever with, hmm? so it could be a viral hepatitis also so if constitutional symptoms are present no, no, no. or uh, cholangitis can be uh, cholangitis due to cholangitis patient may have fever sir suppose jaundice with a back pain patient gives history of jaundice with a severe back pain what could be the possible for me because of chronic pancreatitis sir or malignancy pancreatic malignancy yes pancreatic malignancy sir how how do you say it is a progressive jaundice sir patient told the intensity of the jaundice he noticed was progressively increasing sir it is oh, uh, yellow discoloration of the eyes and urine became more darker sir gradually mean by more darker uh change from yellow to darker greenish yellow type sir oh. what do you guys see the jaundice first in the eye not in the skin sir since the sclera has elastin uh, it has high affinity towards bilirubin so increased bilirubin deposits in the sclera are clear sir good there is one reason any other reason the sclera is also not having a melanin pigments it is melanin, no, melanin is pigment. it is white so easy, easy to appreciate sir in a late progressive deepening of the jaundice what will be the color So it will be greenish yellow, sir. Greenish yellow, then again it goes to the dark brownish. Brownish. Is due to what? Up to the greenish, it is due to the blue ruby, and it can get reduced ah, to the blue verde. So when you have a more blue verde is more, you will have the color will be. Okay, sir. Uh, Doctor Sun, Doctor Sundar. Uh, yes, did you rule out uh, the history of taking a herbal medicine because this cholesterol uh, yes sir actually i asked sir i forgot to mention uh, there is no history of any such herbal or any native medicine sir because the one of the very important cause of cholesterol jaundice is the taking of the herbal medicines in the initial stage of a jaundice which is very much practiced in northern india i do not know about the south and that yes, causes uh, that causes severe cholestatic jaundice along with a itching itching is also very common and this picture is almost similar with a uh, malignant conditions yes sir then why do you say it is obstructive jaundice sir so patient uh, the supportive points in my history patient has a progressive jaundice uh, and recently he has pain onset and patient is also uh, having pale colored stools and itching over the body sir so this is these points are in favor of obstructive jaundice sir what is the difference between a waxing venic jaundice and intermittent jaundice so in intermittent jaundice there will be intervening periods of normal cyst like there will be no jaundice at all but in waxing and waning it just the intensity decreases and then increases again sir so can you give the example of a waxing and waning jaundice or intermittent sir, jaundice sir it is uh intermittent jaundice it is uh, commonly seen in a cbd calculus sir common bile duct calculus yeah. and uh, Waxing and waning of jaundice is seen in ampullary variety of periampullary carcinoma. What do you look at? Waxing and waning of jaundice. What you are going to look? How do you say that is a waxing and waning of jaundice? So commonly elicited history is the pale colored stools become normal when the jaundice is subsiding, sir. And uh, during that period, the patient might complain of melina also, and uh, the pale colored st uh, stool will become normal in color. and uh, when once, once the jaundice increases again then again patient passes pain is it a, is it a increase in uh, hyperbilirubinemia or the clinical symptoms you are going to say it is a vaccine you are not going so to say the it's a examination of the bilirubin 
it is the clinical yes, symptom of uh, the decrease in the symptoms. clinical symptoms because it takes long yes. time how much what is the half life of bilirubin sir bilirubin uh, normally it is bound to albumin sir so it uh, around 2 weeks sir half life to days. Is this, both are even yes, this sir. is nearly 21 days and it takes a long time yes. for the bilirubin to yes. change and you don't get into the either. but here we are going to look at the, the symptom patients have as a stool color changes all this is among the urine yes, and uh, i which one will get the yellow color first normally sir, the i is, sir no i sir. will always take oh, more than 2.5 reaches only the i will get the color so urine will get the color even if there is it is 1.5 two you will get so the first yes, time sir. comes to happen is that uh, urine urine disc yes why urine is yellow in jaundice patient so because of the bilirubin. conjugated bilirubin it uh, gets absorbed into the blood and it is filtered in the urine sir okay. because of bilirubin sir so can you get a jaundice where the sclera is yellow but the urine is not colored so it can happen in uh, a choleric jaundice sir a choleric what is that a choleric jaundice so suppose in patients with hemolysis in case of example hereditary spherocytosis uh, bilirubin is produced but the bilirubin is unconjugated so unconjugated bilirubin is not soluble in water sir so it is not passed in blood and urine so in that cases we don't get the yellowish discoloration in urine yeah so simply say any hemolytic jaundice isn't any hemolytic any hemolytic jaundice you can get the a choleric jaundice Now, if a patient has been given blood transfusion, when can patient get the jaundice? If so patient after the there is a hemolytic reaction, if patient receives some massive blood transfusion, yes, then patient can have a hemolysis and that can manifest as jaundice. When? When it will happen? So when it is a incomplete mismatched blood, sir. So when it will happen? duration of that it has been given like at at this time we are given the blood so if we estimate at 12 o'clock in the night will it be there jaundice no sir so how much time it will take sir, i am not sure sir sorry it's around 24 hours so under okay sir can okay. it happen later on can you have the jaundice because of the blood transfusion later on suppose if there is any viral infection sir any so when when that will manifest is, when that will manifest when that will manifest that may be late sir after months sure. around 6 weeks you know Six weeks around six, six weeks, weeks. Right? you can have the viral hepatitis so you know okay sir. okay, okay. <clears throat> you can go to the examination if any other examiner wants to ask then uh, dr sundar your yes, pre- preliminary diagnosis is an obstructive with john yes. hello yes sir So preliminary. Is there any correlation of surgical procedure with the jaundice? Past surgical procedure that led to the jaundice. Sir, so, yes, sir. Past history, any past history of uh, biliary tract surgery can uh, lead to a stricture in the biliary tree, which can cause jaundice. Okay, proceed. So, Doctor Sundar, your the provisional diagnosis is. Uh, obstructive jaundice okay. so yes sir. so now your next step will be to know the where is the obstruction right yes sir so how will you proceed to know the level of obstruction so first i'll do the clinical examination sir i'll present it and then i'll go on with the evaluation sir no no you have to rule out the cholestatic jaundice the medical cause of the cholestatic jaundice okay then is the yes, surgi- surgical cause because you have yes, to rule out the medical cause of cholestatic jaundice in this patient there are no constitutional symptoms sir 
in case of uh, viral or medical polystatic jaundice patient might have constitutional symptoms like fever malaise and all but all those symptoms are not present in this patient sir so it's more pointing towards a surgical cause of jaundice sir yeah so how you proceed for the i mean the, to know the level of obstruction or to know the cause of jaundice so by examination and yeah. uh, investigation sir. okay what are the uh, salient points you see in the i mean the surgical obstructive jaundice clinical points in the surgical obstructive jaundice uh yes sir the, there is a palpable uh, gallbladder in the first there is a on general examination there will be ictus sir so shall i present the examination sir yes yes please yes sir after informed consent patient was examined under adequate light and exposure patient is cooperative bmi is 22.5 kg per meter square the ecog score is 1 ictus is present no pallor cyanosis clubbing generalized lymphadenopathy or pilar edema no palpable left supraclavicular lymph node and vitals uh, pulse rate 60 beats per minute and uh, regular in rhythm and normal volume uh, blood pressure 110 by 80 mm mercury in right arm supine position patient is afebrile and uh, respiratory rate 18 cycles per minute so this is the ictus Uh, coming to the examination of abdomen on inspection abdomen is normal in shape umbilicus central and inverted all quadrants move equally with respiration skin few scratch marks were present over the abdomen no scars or dilated veins no visible lump or peristalsis hernial sites are normal and external genitalia are normal and uh, palpation uh, abdomen is not warm not tender no guarding or rigidity gallbladder is palpable in the right hypochondrium and right lumbar region there is no hepatospinomegaly or any other organomegaly there is no free fluid in the abdomen percussion upper limit of liver dullness felt in fifth intercostal space liver span is 12 cm uh, the percussion is resonant in rest of the abdomen uh, auscultation uh, rest of the abdomen except over the gallbladder auscultation uh, bowel sounds present peripheral examination anal flow normal no growth palpable or uh, recto vesical pouch deposits felt and uh, on the glove there was fecal staining other systems examination uh, were within normal limits so on summarizing 55 year old male came with history of progressive jaundice since 3 months associated with pale stools and itching loss of appetite and weight since 3 months the leaking pain in upper abdomen since 1 month on examination ictus is present gallbladder is palpable no free fluid in abdomen and no palpable lymphadenopathy so uh, based on the history and examination uh, my differential diagnosis will be uh, obstructive jaundice uh, due to carcinoma head of pancreas or periampullary carcinoma uh, i have seen uh, in your examination that or uh, that the jaundice is a very deep jaundice in this patient is it Yes, so, sir. can you judge something on the the level of ictus that if the patient is a benign or a malignant conditions? Yes, sir. Uh, such a deep ictus is usually present in malignant conditions, sir. Benign so, condition we don't uh, usually get a very high jaundice, sir. So, how much is the the expected bilirubin in a benign conditions? I mean, beyond which you can think in it is a malignant conditions. Any clinical assessment? So about ten milligrams. About ten milligram cases per deciliter. Yeah, ten fifteen milligrams. Beyond that, you always suspect either it is a you know some kind of a hepatitis or it is a malignant obstructive jaundice. Yes, sir. Okay. What is the maximum believable level you can get? Sir, around thirty, sir. Why you are not going to get at the hundred and all? I am not sure, sir. That means the continuous pressure is there. It is a building pressure which will compress upon the surrounding hepatocytes and it will cease to function. The functioning cease of the hepatocytes function. okay. and will be not there. Okay. So you will not okay. normally get.
but you you think is a which one is the first diagnosis carcinoma head of the pancreas what makes you to think it's a carcinoma head of the pancreas sir from my uh, history uh, the patient has a progressive jaundice and the patient also has pain and there is no waxing of waxing and waning and the pain is also suggestive of a pancreatic so the patient has an epigastric pain which is radiating to the back and uh, itching and pale colored stools are there loss of weight and appetite and on examination also there is a hugely palpable gall bladder what and is the reason for the uh, pancreatic pain sir why do you get pain in the pancreatitis in pancreatitis or in this case sir no no when you use said there is because this patient you are expecting a pancreatitis and that is why you are getting a pain so what no, is the sir. characteristic feature Organ of the, of the pancreatitis and why do you get so it is uh, due to uh, inflammation of the pancreas and the duct sir so there is clearly oh. six reasons are given if you you can go back and refer in the swots there is a one beautiful okay. tabular column is there why in the chronic pancreatitis you are getting pain it compresses all metabolic cause neurogenic and the it is a uh, obstructive okay, of the stool and even the enzymes which they are secreting so all that six reasons is given in a beautiful tabular column in the swots and the pgs can refer that i mean because that is one of the uh, good point like note that is why you are getting pain and what type of pain you are going to get okay so here okay. Uh, you you are saying that typical the pain so you are thinking in terms of the pancreatitis is there is a difference in, in the pain in the pancreatitis head of the pancreas carcinoma head of the pancreas the carcinoma my uh, differential diagnosis will be carcinoma head of pancreas sir, because i am suspecting malignant etiology in this patient so in carcinoma in large uh, large tumors oh, you... uh, there will be infiltration of the celiac plexus and retropancreatic nerve sir so that is the main cause of pain but this case has no patient is not a diabetic you don't have a... gall bladder is not palpable gallbladder is palpable is palpable okay go yes sir so further a biochemical investigation uh, and what are findings in this case sir uh, biochemical uh, lft bilirubin was uh, total bilirubin was 22.3 direct bilirubin was 20 alkaline phosphatase was 1123 sir and other uh, liver enzymes were also deranged uh, alt117 ggt515 and ast153 and uh, tumor marker ca99 was very high more than 1000 tumors per liter and uh, carcinoma embryonic antigen was also was 4.3 sounds it was normal the so, sonder your first investigation is cct abdomen your first so, no sir my first is... investigation is not cct abdomen Yes, I will do a ultrasound of the abdomen first, sir, with LFT. But you have not written that. But any what findings you will get in the ultrasound? Sir, ultrasound is, first. Is, I will. Yes, uh, of a carcinoma head of the pancreas. Yes, sir. The case of carcinoma head of the pancreas. What are the ultrasound yes, findings? Yes, sir. First, I will. Uh, look for the liver for the intrahepatic biliary duct dilatations good and the dilatation of the common bile duct the yes. diameter and the uh, gall bladder distended gall bladder the wall thickness of the gall bladder good and the uh, uh, pancreatic duct diameter yes and uh, if if the mass head mass is a larger mass like more than 3 to 4 cm sometimes it may be picked up in ultrasound good so i can also look at the mass and i will look for the regional lymph nodes any uh, metastatic uh, no nodules in the liver and also free fluid in the abdomen sir what is the normal diameter of the bile duct sir it is uh, up to 6 mm Six seven. Okay, yes. And it is uh, seven called dilated common bile duct. And pancreatic duct. 
pancreatic duct it is around uh, up to 3 mm sir so if both the ducts are dilated what is the typical sign known as i will get a double duct sign sir double so you always mention now when you yes. tell if you use this word double duct sign examiner will yes. be very happy to know that okay so always say yes, there is a double duct sign is there double duct sign yes. while that will be the same in size for all the age group no sir it actually uh, differs according to the age sir in infants it is around 2 mm in children it is around 3 mm up to fourth decade it is 4 mm and uh, fifth decade it is 5 mm so uh, and it increases according to the age if it is more than 7 mm it is considered as dilated sir okay under what are the limitations of ultrasonography in case of pancreatic pathology sir first of all ultrasound is operator dependent hmm. and uh, pancreas smaller tumors may, may not be picked up by the ultrasound because of uh, bowel shadow gas shadow uh, obscuring it sir if you have a small tumor can you still do the ultrasound there is a small tumor is there and you want to pick it by the ultrasound sir trans abdominal i don't know sir endoscopic ultrasound can be endo ultrasound and no? endo ultrasound yes sir you do the endo ultrasound yes what is what is contrast ultrasonogram contrast enhanced ultrasonogram sir. After giving contrast, we do the ultras. What is the contrast of an ultrasonogram? Water. No, it is a micro bubbles. So less than ten mm okay, size. Okay, sir. It is a good conductor medium. And when you are giving a micro, okay. close to that, and it produces a air in the micro level, capillary levels. So that will delineate the mass and the other space. So contrast enhanced ultrasonogram is one of the 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 investigation now people started doing for uh, any 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 so, we can uh, do how are the micro bubbles where it is introduced sir actually no it will block the capillaries air, okay the uh, uh, air column so that will be a okay. uh, media you can be able to see the differentiated with mass and the uh, micro bubble area so that will be able to okay, different for ultrasonogram so micro air bubbles So now another one okay. is a fibro scan like things. So you can the the thickness yes, type can be also seen in an ultrasonogram. Yes, sir. Sundar, in your investigation, yes, I did not see the albumin level of the patient. So albumin was normal, sir. I did not mention it was three point five, sir. Okay. because it is so important you have to know the yes. size score of the patient before taking up the patient for surgery you know so albumin is very important you mentioned about the the acetic fluid inside the abdomen but you i think i did not see the albumin level in your slide that's why i'm asking there was no acetic in this patient and i know but albumin level also it should it should be i mean okay. just, suppose you find the albumin is low and how will you manage that so i'll have to optimize the patient if i'm planning for surgery before that i'll yeah. as a patient to take a high protein diet and uh, i can i'll also give albumin infusion sir no the, whatever the albumin you are give not going to increase the albumin level because albumin yes, sir, is... actually albumin half life is longer sir 3 weeks so, i think you have to make, if there is a biliary obstruction that has to be released so reticular endothelial function yes, has sir. to be put and you have to give nearly 6 week to recover to normal level the load of albumin is only going to help to angiotic pressure it will never increase the internal level albumin okay. so it is a is a liver function so that you have to do yes. but when you have a uh, defect that can be corrected so the extrinsic defect is there sir, sorry sir audio was not clear If the coagulation factor is wrong, that can be corrected by supplementing. Yes, sir. Supplementing vitamin K. Sir. Okay. Sir, 
Dr. Sundar, your patient is a bilirubin is more than 20. Okay. Yes, sir. So, as uh, our faculty has said about the, this thing, uh, this improvement of the liver function and all, so how will you optimize the patient before surgery? Because bilirubin is more than 20. Uh, sir, is my screen visible or not, sir? You are visible very well. You are visible, yeah. Okay, sir. Okay. Sir, the, in this patient, since the bilirubin is more than 20, I can uh, uh, bring down the jaundice by using a, uh, doing a ERCP and stenting of the biliary duct, sir. Okay. Preoperatively. And how long, I mean, the, you'll keep the stand there. I mean, how much, how will you follow up the case there to bring down the bilirubin and all? So I'll call the patient back after two to three weeks, sir. No, no, I'm asking about the, how much should be the bilirubin level before taking up this, this major surgery? Any evidence or what the uh, literature says about that? What the indication? Uh -huh. Sir? What are the indications for biliary drainage? So, if uh, bilirubin is more than 20, uh, if the patient performance status is low and uh, if there is a, the advanced disease, it is for palliation. And uh, if uh, the surgery has to be uh, delayed because of uh, uh, due for optimizing the patient and uh, in these cases uh, and patient having cholangitis in these cases we can do a biliary drainage sir what is the problem if and you elderly age group also sir what is the problem with doing a drainage procedure before a radical surgery Sir, uh, it is shown that it increases the complications of uh, wound infections. Uh, wound infective complications are increased in these patients uh, post-operatively. Anything else from the surgeon's point of view? Uh, dissection may be difficult, sir, because of uh, adhesions and uh, inflammation around the duct region, sir. So, technically, it becomes really difficult. Yes, sir. Technically, it is very difficult after the stent is there. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. So, how will you improve his coagulation parameter? So, coagulation parameter, I will give a vitamin K injection, 10 milligram IM for which uh, vitamin K you are going to give? Which vitamin K you are going to give? Which vitamin K? Menadion, sir. Which is that? K1, sir. Vitamin K1, sir. K1, yeah. Vitamin K1, you are going. And for how long you are going yes. to give it? So I can give, uh, can be given till five to seven days, sir. Usually for three days only. Okay. Three days. Usually for three days, yes, sir. So will it bring the prothrombin time to normal? By giving so three days vitamin may, K, which will bring the prothrombin time to normal. It may not bring, sir, if there is associated liver cell dysfunction. No, no it never brings, okay. It never it will brings, never bring it to the normal, you know. It will probably improve, but it will never bring it to the normal. Okay, sir. So, but still you are worried about that, that the, this prothrombin time is raised. What next, next you can do? I can give, I will give fresh frozen plasma, sir. Why do you want to give vitamin K? Sir, to promote the uh, synthesis of, of uh, vitamin K dependent factors. Sir. Intrinsic or extrinsic? Extrinsic pathway, sir. Oh. What is that? What are their factors? Sir, sir uh, factors 2, 7, 9. 10 and protein C and S, sir. What is the new nets uh, we give vitamin K? Uh, vitamin K will be also given in the new nets. So, newborn. 
Yes, sir. That's Sorry, sir, I'm not sure. Okay. At time that vitamin K is not there, absorbed because there is a bacteria will not be there in the body. That uh, intestine okay. will. Okay. Act. Gut microbe are one. Gut microbe is needed for the reduction reaction, and deconjugation yes, is by the enzyme. There's a both yes, reaction, deconjugation and this is a reduction the salts. So deconjugation by the lactase enzyme, and this is by the bacteria which is not be there. Yes. Sundar, did you ask the history of night blindness in your patient? No, sir. Can it happen? Sir, it can happen, but within such a short history, I am not sure, sir, because fat soluble vitamins absorption will be low because bile salts won't be present in obstructive okay. jaundice. In about 10% patients of the patients of malignant jaundice may have the night blindness. Okay. So that is also one okay, of the sir. history you have to ask. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Sundar, see, you are planning uh, the big surgery on this patient. Do you think that tissue diagnosis is mandatory here? Before sir, surgery? first on imaging, I will, I will do a... CECT uh, pancreatic protocol imaging. If the imaging is suggestive of a resectable tumor and uh, the size is small, then uh, uh, I can go ahead with the radical surgery straight away, sir. Suppose if the tumor is suspicious or uh, if there is a locally advanced borderline resectable tumor where I will have to give a neoadjuvant chemotherapy first. So in that case, I will like to make a tissue diagnosis, sir. No, no, no. My point is that suppose endoscopic biopsy is negative. At that okay. case, how will you proceed? Because it may be possible that negative endoscopy is many a times we have seen the negative endoscopy. What will you do that? How will you convince the patient? Sir, still, still, if the imaging is suspicious, I will go ahead with the surgery, sir. So, is there any medical legal issue for that? Because if it comes out to be a papilloma or something like that later on. I'm not sure, sir. What literature says about it? Because we have to support the literature now on this point only. Do you do you like to go for a endosonal biopsy, endoscopic ultrasound biopsy in case of a suppose side being yeah, biopsy? I can, I, I'll do, I can do an endoscopic ultrasound guided biopsy, sir, to get a better yield. Yeah, we have, to, we have to try everything before that because it, it is a high morbidity cases and sometimes, you know, up to 3 to 4 percent mortality is also there. So I think the tissue diagnosis is important, but it is not mandatory also at the same time. Because if your CT okay. and uh, your other investigation shows that it is a, you know, uh, it is a mitotic lesions, right? Yes. But in case of it is inoperable, suppose, if the CT shows inoperable and you are planning a chemotherapy, yes. in that case, you have to then go for a tissue diagnosis. It is a must. Tissue yes. diagnosis you have to do. I think my yes. other faculty friends will clarify more on this brief. I mean, Sundar, can you tell that what are the tumors where you can go for a radical operation without the tissue biopsy? Without the tissue biopsy? So one is this pancreatic at malignancies. Yes, you're right. Yes. What, what are carcinoma. Yes. Then, carcinoma. Carcinoma of the gallbladder? Carcinoma of the gallbladder also. Sir. All, all, yes, all based on investigation. And renal, yes, sir. renal cell carcinoma? The renal cell carcinoma also I can do, sir, without yes. biopsy. Parotid tumor, benign tumor, you will go for a superficial parotidectomy. You may not have a tissue biopsy. Yes, sir, that is the minimum biopsy. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, so, all these are the tumors where you can 
based only on the investigative protocol, you can go for that. Okay. Sundar. Sundar. Yes, sir. What yes, are sir. the criteria for resectable tumor? What are the criteria for borderline resectable tumor? And what are the criteria for inoperable tumor? So, resectable tumor is uh, a localized tumor without any uh, without any uh, vessel, uh, major vessel involvement like superior mesenteric artery, superior mesenteric vein or portal vein involvement. Mass size you can resect? Sir? Mass of any size? So more than four, less than four centimeters. Sir. That you have to specify, no? Yes, sir. Sundar, if it is the portal when it is there, sir. you cannot go for the radical resection. If the portal when is involved, you cannot go for the radical yes, resection. Sir. So if portal vein is involved, uh, we can go, sir. With uh, it can be reconstructed if. The involvement is less than two centimeter, or if the proximal and distal segments are normal, which can promote reconstruction, which can facilitate reconstruction. In that case, we can go for resection. Is it absolute radical resection? But which artery, if it is involved, or which vessel involved, you cannot go for that. Superior mesenteric artery, sir. Why? Yes. Superior mesenteric artery is involved, you cannot go for that. But if the vein is involved. Or the portal vein is involved, still you can go for the radical section. Why? Yes. This involved, you can't go for surgery. No, what is the reason Sir, for? Uh, you cannot go by when the surgery. You are saying Sir, the portal can reconstruct. Is it difficult to reconstruct superior mesenteric artery? The Sir, the, uh, the uh, reconstruction, uh, the Arterial wall is thick, so reconstruction may be a problem sometimes. Uh, you, so you have the whole the iota. Poor good. No, the perimesentric artery is involved. The perineural involvement is there. It always perineural is yes. perineural and involved. That is the reason why you are not doing the superior mesenteric artery. Once it is involved, there is a perineural involvement. Perineural involvement says it is a contra absolute contradiction. So superior mesenteric artery is not okay. with the feet. That you cannot reconstruct. It is only with that idea of it is shows the advancements of the disease because it is going for a plus involvement. So you should not do. Okay. That. Then this is a landmark where you are going to say that is why we are going the super. Okay. Okay. Now before you go for a radical operation, which investigation you will do before you land in the laparotomy? So I'll do a diagnostic laparoscopy, sir. Okay. And what you want to see in the diagnostic laparoscopy, which you have not picked up in sir. all your MRCPs and the CT scan everything. Smaller peritoneal deposits, smaller peritoneal deposits and liver deposits, which are not visible in CT, can be seen in uh, diagnostic laparoscopy. Yes, sir. So, so that I can avoid a yes. negative, so that I can avoid a lap In a miliary Closest also, we will have a peritoneal deposits. How will you differentiate? Sir? A miliary tuberculosis or the tuberculous nodules will be also there. That's wrong. Sir, I can do a peritoneal cytology and from, sir. So even on inspection, there will be the typical features of the malignancy and the tuberculosis. Oh. So what cytology you will do? I'll do a peritoneal wash and send the fluid for cytology, sir. What normally what percentage will be positive? There is a very significant amount. 10 to 15 percentage can yes. be percentage. that is why it is now mandatory, as uh, Kanagar Sar has said, the laparoscopy is mandatory to do before you are going for a radical surgery. Radical surgery, yes. Sundar, if you are not able to carry out the radical surgery and you have to go only for the palliation, so what are the things you are going to palliate in a patient with a carcinoma head of the pancreas? So, sir, I will palliate jaundice. Yes. I will palliate... Uh, Why you want to palliate pain? the jaundice? 
what is the reason that why you want to palliate the jaundice sir so, jaundice if i don't palliate it can progressively lead on to liver failure sir patient can okay before the liver failure before the patient goes into the liver failure what is the most distressing feature of a obstructive jaundice itching sir yes, itching. itching is reduced so that yes, is the sir. most important palliation which is the itching is yes sir. right so one is the jaundice what are the other palliations so if there is any associated gastric outlet obstruction i will palliate that also right. sir by yeah. doing Thank a gastro jejunostomy sure. if i am doing it surgically right always endoscopically what, i can what are the other uh, palliations no so one is the jaundice I'll second is the pain, vomiting hmm? i will palliate pain sir pain yes very right. right. good Yes, so sir, what are the various ways to sir. what are the various ways to palliate the jaundice in a patient with the carcinoma hepatopancreas which is not resectable so one is uh end ERCP and biliary stenting sir retrograde right. or i can do a anti grade stenting by a percutaneous route right and uh, suppose if i if this is not possible if i want to do it surgically i can do a colidoco jejunostomy or hepatico jejunostomy sir will the yes can you do a cholecystogenic ostomy cholecystogenic ostomy may not help in this patient sir it it can help why the, the distal obstruction is distal so it will bypass so that you know in fact in the, in the olden days it was done because this is relatively a easier operation as compared to carrying out the hepatico docogenostomy or a colidocogenostomy yes sir it depends upon the where the cystic duct is opening yes so that is the most important thing that you have to see yes sir whether the cystic duct is blocked or cystic not duct is. if the cystic duct is blocked okay sir. then you will go not do that no but if it is that is open will not do that so sir. can you can you judge that operation you know in the olden days we did not have any instrument we did not have any ultrasound or anything like that sir we can aspirate the bile and see sir if so if what, what we will get a white bile sir in where gall bladder in the gall bladder so if there is a white bile in the gall bladder is there so does what does that mean cystic duct is obstructed sir cystic duct is obstructed in fact you have to aspirate from two points You have to aspirate the gall from the bile duct. You have to aspirate from the common hepatic duct. Yes. Okay. If you find yes. that there is a white bile in the gall bladder, but green bile in the common hepatic duct, then, then you cannot do that. Master. Then you cannot do that. Yes. But yes. you find white on both sides, gall bladder as well as in the common hepatic duct, then you can do that. Yes. Because it's the white yes. bile which is coming here. Okay. so that was the test which was done when we did not have all those intraoperative ultrasounds and all those things to whether you can yes. go for a cholecystogenostomy or not okay. okay any other way to palliate the jaundice yes, so one you say that you will do the ercp second you said that you do the percutaneous transhepatic any other way nowadays which is done Yes, which one is that so ptbd sir no external you, biliary ptbd you have discuss about no ptbd percutaneous you told about that but now it is it is with the help of the endo ultrasound with the endo ultrasound okay sir endo ultrasound you can put a stent between the bile duct and the stomach Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, you can put a stand between that. So that is the most recent thing which can be done. Okay, for any okay. distal obstruction which is there. Okay. What are the various okay. ways to palliate the pain? Sir, pain celiac plexus blockade can be done, sir. Yes. With absolute alcohol or phenol. Right. And uh, splanch splanchisectomy also can be done, sir. and how will you palliate the vomiting and opioid okay that is the wh gastric outlet then i will put a self expanding metal stent duodenal metal stent sir 
yes endoscopically right if uh, surgically i can i'll do a gastroesophagectomy can you do a gastroesophagectomy endoscopically also yes sir yes that is also possibility now isn't it so you can either put a stent there in yes, the duodenum endoscopic i can do or you can do also the endoscopic yes, gastroesophagectomy endoscopic gastro gastroesophagectomy like okay. right. you know what is third space endoscopy have you heard the near third space endoscopy so is it that endoscopic thyroid एंडोस्कोपी जो है ना उंड third phase endoscopy is definitely having very clear benefits in select patients gpoem is okay. a very typical answer by any examiner will be expecting from you if they are asking about the third phase endoscopy all right okay. now endoscopy okay. laparoscopy collaborative procedures are also being done so there was yes. a question in the recent advances shortly i would recommend you to go through that packet please take over okay sir you have any tumor marker to assess the pancreatic uh, malignancy status sir uh, ca99 and uh, how much cr ca and afp are done sir usually how much uh, sir, uh, here in this patient ca99 was elevated sir more than 1000 sir so that is one of the absolute contraindication for that more than 1000 of the ca19 is there yes sir You know what? Jailal was asking about the pain in the. Okay, Doctor Jailal was asking about the pain in the pancreatic one, right? Eh, so when there is a retroperitoneal pain in a patient suspected of the carcinoma of the pancreas, this is an inoperable tumor. Yes, locally advanced tumor. Yes. Yeah. So this is inoperable. So that was one of the signs or symptoms was there. That if the patient has got the retroperitoneal pain, which is on the back pain, is there. So that was a sign of inoperability yes, for a carcinoma pancreas. Yes, sir. yes, sir. So, in case if you are going for a radical operation, how will you proceed? You have done sir, a diagnostic after... laparoscopy. Okay, you have done a diagnostic yes, laparoscopy. Now you are planned that you are going for the operation now. So, what incision you are okay. going to make? I will do a midline laparotomy, sir. So that is one. Any other? Or a rooftop incision, sir. Okay, rooftop incision, good. Right. Then, what yes. you will do once you enter in the abdominal cavity? What you will do? First, I will do a exploration, sir. Good. Yes. So you explore the two liver mats, the no ascites, the no peritoneal metastasis. Then what you yes, will do? so first i will uh, explore the reason for superior mesenteric artery involvement sir so how will you explore that reason what you are going to do i'll do a cattle brush and caucus maneuver sir good and i'll uh, look for the superior mesenteric artery so how far you are going to mobilize if you are doing a cauterization there how far you are going sir, to mobilize till the, till the left side of the aorta sir left renal vein na no? left you renal oblige up to the left renal vein here left this yes. right then then what you will do then i'll look for the arterial and the venous involvement sir 
No, no, that you have already checked. You know, once you have done all these things, you already checked that. What is the tunnel of love? Yes. Tunnel of love is the space which is present between the posterior surface of neck of the pancreas and the portal vein, superior mesenteric vein confluence. Right. So what that is, is usually one? probed to check whether uh, the tumor is infiltrating the portal vein or not. So if it is free, then we can go ahead with the resection safely. Okay. So what are the things so I wanted answer? to ask one doubt, sir. Yeah, please, yeah. Ask that, yeah. Sir, this tunnel of love, actually, I read in uh, Fisher's Mastery of Surgery. They have mentioned that uh, it is no longer actually practiced because it is uh, it can lead to injury to the vein and cause trouble, some bleeding. So, is it a routine practice that we should do it or not, sir? I think most of the people, they do that, you know, because there are okay. no branches from the anterior side of the portal vein. The branches okay, which are sir. there are only on the lateral side. Laterally. Yeah. Laterally, so, yes, yeah. So, you can do that, you know. But okay. some people say probably it may not be required, but majority of the people, when they are doing this, operation, they will do this. They will see that okay. this is free from the neck of the pancreas as well. Okay. So, what are the structures okay. you are going to remove? So in classical weapons, I will remove part of the distal stomach antropyloric region. I will reset there along with the uh, uh, duodenum, for whole of the duodenum and proximal 10 centimeter of the jejunum. Okay. With the head, neck, and uncinate process of the pancreas, okay. and uh, with the common bile duct with the gallbladder, sir. How much common bile duct you are going to remove? So till the cystic. Are you doing an osmosis of the common bile duct? No, sir. Hepatic duct, sir. Common hepatic duct. Till the insertion of the cystic duct, I will remove, sir. So it is the common hepatic duct. You are doing the osmosis on the common hepatic duct. Okay, yeah. right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then how you are going to anastomose? What is the order? So, first I will do the pancreatic or jejunostomy, sir. Next, I will do the hepatic or jejunostomy and lastly, the gastro jejunostomy. So, you have any options for the pancreatic or jejunostomy? Can any other anastomosis can be done? Sir, uh, pancreatic or gastro also can be done, sir. Okay. So, what is the difference between these two? Which one is preferable? Pancreatic or jejunostomy, sir. Which one is... But in some cases, where, yes. where uh, the anastomosis, where in case of a soft pancreas or bulky pancreas, sometimes gastro, pancreatic or gastrostomy is good. Right. What is the advantage of doing a pancreatic or gastrostomy over the pancreatic or jejunostomy? Yes, technically relatively easier. And in case there is a pancreatic stenosis is there, you can do it endoscopically dilatation can be done. Okay, sir. Okay. Right. Endoscopic yeah. dilatation. But if there is a pancreatic and there's no osmi is there, it is technically very difficult to do it technically, very technically difficult. Yeah. endoscopically. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, the conversation you are expecting? I'm sorry, sir. Thank I think uh, Dr. Neha is back. Maybe if we can wind up this discussion, I think she can be allotted for some time to complete her presentation, sir. Sure. 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 I, I wanted to ask one only one please, question. Please, sir. Please, please go ahead, sir. Complete this discussion. Yes, sir. Sundar, am I audible? Yes. Yeah, perfect. Sir. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, yes, sir, before transaction of the pancreas, let us see your passing through the what is a tunnel of love before transecting the pancreas you have to check for one vessel what vessel you have to check and why so i will occlude the gastro duodenal artery and look for the hepatic arterial flow sir so if the yes. flow is present why? then i can go at digestion of the gastro duodenal artery sometimes mm. there may be a replaced uh, hepatic common hepatic artery sir in that case or there may be a 
uh, liver may get only the collaterals from the gastrodeodinal artery so in that cases i will have to preserve the gastrodeodinal artery sir i cannot like it see so because of this vascular anatomy abnormality which is there what investigation is mandatory sir before you go for a ct angiography yes so in all cases you have to carry out the ct angiography to see for any because almost in about 30 to 40% cases you will find is abnormality there hepatic arteries abnormality yes, this is one of the commonest abnormality the hepatic artery may arise from the superior mesenteric the superior mesenteric so artery sir yes so you have to check before dividing that that is a one important step otherwise the liver may necrosis okay that yes that sir cell from is how will you identify the Thank pancreatic you. leak <clears throat> you have anastomosis gas what are they? how will you identify the leaks what are the early symptoms So patient uh, have signs of peritonitis, sir. That is after the leak has come and late. Can you measure something in the drain? Drain I can do, sir. If the drain is present, I can measure drain fluid for amylase, sir. If it is more than three times normal, the serum value then. I three times confirm. normal or more higher? It's not three times the normal. What is the unit of amylase? So international unit per ml liter, sir. Any other units? Mm. Read up. If you tell international units, it's accepted. Yeah. The previous generation okay, of seniors may look out for one more answer also. Samogi unit, eh? Right? Have okay. you heard of the Samogi unit? Samogi unit, sir. I okay. thought they will have to read, but <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Another is okay. early dumping. When you have patient has early dumping, early dumping. Yeah. Okay. So how do you measure the early dumping? Early oh, dumping is measured by the PCV, pack cell volume. Late dumping oh. is measured okay. by the blood glucose. Uh -huh. That is by the hypoglycemia. That is by the hypoglycemia. So that is by the PCV yeah. value. Altered. That is early. This is a surrogate indicator for uh, pancreatic leak. Okay. The most common trouble soon there is why people go for good. Easy. Yes. Pancreatic uh... gastrostomy is the ileus. There is one set of problem both in gastroparesis yes. and postoperative ileus for unknown reasons when you do a radical bubbles. Bubbles yes, never sir. move. days together people end up waiting for removal of the ileus that's the reason pg yes. is prepared over it because if you are going to do a pancreatic gingostomy you do a digital transection there are still people okay. who believe the continuity of the bowel should be preserved as much as possible for avoiding into an yes. ileus because ileus is yes. a very disturbing complication people who do high volume yes. bubble procedure would definitely would have faced this trouble because none no medicines work it is from fine day it starts working nobody knows why it does not work but people have burned yes, their sir. finger both on gastroparesis and post operative ileus the other extreme is what uh, professor jailal sir was telling about is the patient develops yeah. dumping hypoglycemia patient sometimes faints see many okay. times whipple uh, procedure is done as a definitive procedure you don't yes. have much options to restore Surgical options for dumping. Are you aware of things? Treatment for dumping. So dumping syndrome is a short note for all of you. Students yes, should sir. take extra care about reading. Both the afferent loop, efferent loop syndromes, dumping are all definitive short note questions. Please be aware and be take some time off to read yes, those. Sir. Okay. Sir, sir suppose is nasogastric. Uh, tube insertion in post op period how long it is has to be kept sir like see there are departments which the, no more use yes. nasogastric tube for any anastomosis see there are people not anastom like regular for what? Uh, rails tube sir nasogastric decompression for nasogastric decompression post operatively for how long is it kept sir like that what i am telling there is no recommendation for nasogastric it. decompression at all after whipple there are centers who have stopped using nasogastric okay. tube 
right okay, nah. people the believe is by very... aspirating the nasal or gastric content the forward peristalsis is delayed that is the current trend of thought process people are going up okay. nasal yes, gastric sir. tube yes, is done only if the patient develops distress patient develops distress okay. which does not patient becomes uncomfortable so these are the conditions people are advised okay. the most important use for nasal gastric tube is something different if you have done a pancreatic gastrostomy if you have done a procedure or when you have a blood in the see then the next important complication is the bleeding along the pancreatic or gastric or pancreatic or jejunal yes. anastomosis yes sir yes sir so having a uh, tube makes your thing very evident that is all that is the yes. idea of doing it but please be aware the specificity of a rail tube showing a pancreatic gastrostomy bleeds or any anastomotic bleeds are very minimal right yes, they don't they are not immediately evident that's why nasogastric tube for any anastomosis or any major procedure is getting out of thing except yes. for clear indication it's a part of eras protocol you know what is eras protocol yes sir enhanced recovery yeah so that is one of the component of that that no tube should be there in the eras protocol no tubes yeah. so all then days when in doubt put a drain now when in doubt don't put a drain yes <laughs> don't put it <laughs> right drainage no, after anastomosis also is no more recommended as sir said eras is one other short notes sometimes yes, even sir. if it's asked as a long question yes, please sir. be aware pancreatic eras rectal eras colonic eras are totally different yes, sir. right liver reception yes, eras sir. so eras for du perforation is separate so i think students should all read as a anecdote of all the major procedures eras modification should be aware many departments are without their knowledge they are adopting eras protocols as a regular protocols but still eras is a separate question for all of the students please be aware of it yes sir eras for elective elags for emergency and particular organ wise yes sir yes so thank you sir i think we have to give time to dr neha please stay back Okay, uh, I should thank, thank you, uh, the faculty from Downtown Hospital Guwahati, uh, especially Professor N N Das and team for permitting this boy to present. In fact, he himself volunteered to present the second case. Thank you, Professor Das sir. We recommend you to join us as a faculty for more classes, and you are welcome to send more students also, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Neha. I think you just start from your. Sir, uh, I will stop my screen sharing, sir. Yes, ma'am, please. Yes, well done, sir. Can... Yes, sir. This student has done very well. I mean, he has read, and you need to. I mean, I mean, we appreciate you. Credits Thank to the you, faculty sir. also, sir. Yeah. May I have uh, you please? I think... I think she has already shared, sir. Mine is unshared. Yes, yes, yes. Sir. You start from the low examinations. Faculty, is that fine, sir? Or you want a quick glimpse of the history again, sir? No, I no, think, I think uh, we'll examination. Start from the, the examination part. Yeah, examination part. I think she has completed the examination also, no, sir? Yes, yeah, almost she has completed the examination. So, where does she want? Where do you want to get, yeah. take back the diagnosis the from the diagnosis? Yeah. Diagnosis. Okay, go to the diagnosis slide, Doctor Neha. Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay. She has mammogram, PET pictures also, sir. Maybe we can concentrate on that side also. Please carry on, Doctor Neha. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, let me tell you the summary of the clinical examination. No, uh, I don't think. Uh, yeah, you have completed. Come to the diagnosis slide and take it further. Sir, uh, my diagnosis is carcinoma right breast. Clinically, T three and one M zero with stage three A. You, you, how do you assure it is carcinoma? Why not it is sarcoma? Uh, sir. Uh, firstly, the uh, age of the patient. It was advancing age, and the patient uh, rapid growth of the lump, which grow. That, uh, grow, grow. that can all all happen in sarcoma also. So preferably the malignancy of the breast. Yes, sir. Malignancy of the breast, then preferably a carcinoma. That is better than putting straight away. You are going to say it is a carcinoma. Yes. Carcinoma per se, yes, it is the commonest thing. You are absolutely right. It is a carcinoma. But some of the examiners may feel that you have to put as a malignant tumor of the breast, 
preferably a carcinoma is the first year diagnosis please near can you go to your last slide yes sir you said central group of lymph node was palpable which is non tender yes sir what is the significance of non tender here um sir um, sir non uh, lymph node it also uh, goes towards the uh, uh, carcinoma breast which might have uh, metastasized to the axillary lymph node So what is that non tenderness? What do you understand? You have to answer that. I was saying it is not an implant. Lymphadenitis. Yes, uh, there is no, uh, 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 not any acute inf inflammation. Okay. Okay. Go to your diagnosis. Yeah. Go to your diagnosis. Y T three, Y N one, Y M zero. Uh. Sir, uh, size uh, of the lump is uh, more than five centimeter. Yes. It's uh, that's why it's uh, T three. Uh, so why not T four? Sir, uh, that is T four is also more than five centimeters, is it? Yes, sir. Maybe four more. So why not T four? Sir, T four. There is involvement of the skin. And you said there is uh, already. You said there is a dimpling. The dimpling is not involved in the staging. Then it is what involvement of what? Well, sir, uh, management of the uh, stage does. Um, no. The staging doesn't change. Dimpling, you are saying that is it is not involvement of the skin. Then it is what involvement of what? Sir, Cooper's ligament. So where is it attached? Sir, a contraction of the breast. No, from where to where the corpus ligament is ex extending. Uh, no. So that you said there is no pudio arrange, no? Yes, sir. So no is pudio. it a skin involvement? No, sir. Skin involvement was not there. No, no. Is a pudio arrange is a skin involvement or? Yes, sir. Pudi, um, powdery orange is the skin involvement. Uh, there is an involvement of the uh, subdermal lymphatics. Okay, it is only subdermal lymphatics. So, sir, infiltration. Corpus ligament is also yes, subdermal. Yes. So, Nia, tell what are the three components of the T four B? There are only three components. Yes, sir. What are those? To say it is T four B. Uh, sir, T four B. Sir, uh, there is uh, sir involvement of the breast skin, uh, ulceration, edema, satellite nodules, or powdery orange. So ulceration, powdery orange, or satellite nodule. Satellite nodule. So these are the only three things. Yes, sir. Dimpling, retraction, puckering—they are not T four B, Jay. Right? Yes, sir. Why does the powder occur? So, powder orange, whatever you say, it is. Why does that occur? Uh, due to the infiltration of the uh, tumor cells into the lymphatics, subdermal lymphatics. No, but why does it appear like a orange peel? Uh, due to the edema of the sub dermal tissue you know the typical orange peel appearance is yes sir so why it looks like that so what are those dimplings which are there oh uh, sir hair follicles hair follicles here yeah. so those are the fixed points yes, and the edema is there Yes, and sir. that is why you get the appearance of the orange peel appearance which is there yes sir okay okay if i remember i was asking you that you said the your tumor is not fixed to the pectoral fascia and the pectoral muscle isn't yes sir i was asking you that how do you differentiate whether it is fixed to the pectoral fascia or pectoral muscle
in one of your slide you have written, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah, it is not fixed to the pectoral fascia and not fixed to the pectoral muscle. You know chest right. wall? What is chest yes, wall? What is chest wall? Uh, sir, ribs, intercostal muscles and serratus interior. So okay. if it is fixed to the chest wall, what will happen to the tumor? Uh, sir, it won't. Uh, we will are able to move or uh, move the tumor. It was non-mobile. It will be not mobile. Non non -mobile. Except it can be mobile in which area? Where still it is the chest wall involvement. Is the serratus anterior? Right? Yes, sir. Okay, so this tumor is situated over the spatially toward the lower lateral quadrant. Then in that case, it may be mobile, but still it is fixed to the chest wall. Yes, sir. And how do you say to the pectoral muscle? What uh, you do for the pectoral muscle to know whether it is fixed or not? Uh, will uh, ask the patient to tot his muscles by uh, keeping uh, her hands over the sides. Yes. And uh, the uh, if the uh, it is uh, fixed to the chest wall, then it uh, the tumor, chest, not chest wall, pectoral muscle. Pectoral so muscle. muscle. The yes. uh, lump will get more prominent. No, no. Don't see for the prominence there. Directly, you want to tot the muscle? No. no. Okay. First, you have to check the mobility of the lump Correct. in yes. both the directions. Okay. Yes, sir. In both directions, you have to check the mobility of the lump in the direction of the muscle and right angle to the direction of the muscles. Yes, and sir. then you make the muscle taut. That again, you do the mobility. You do not see whether it is becoming more prominent or not. You see for that, if it is fixed, the pectoral muscle is there. It won't be mobile in any direction. Yes, in the direction of the muscle as well as in the direction, right angle to that. But probably... Probably, I am not saying it is 100% that if there is some mobility left over, then you can say probability is fixed only to the pectoral fascia and not to the muscle. Here. Okay, it is not a 100% thing. But usually, if it is fixed to the pectoral fascia, still there will be some mobility will be there. But if fixed to the pectoral muscle, there will be no mobility will be there on contraction of that. Okay? Yes, sir. Right. How do you check for the internal memory nodes? Um, the one we have discussed fullness something yes sir over the uh, sternum yes. uh, lateral to the sternal border yes so fullness in that area fullness in the intercostal spaces and any other thing which you can do Parasternal uh, para dullness. Para okay, you can percuss in that area and if there is a dullness in the parasternal area is there, it may be suggested that there is an internal memory change is involved. Yes, sir. What are the things you are going to look into the abdomen of a patient of a cancer, suspected cancer breast? Uh, sir, uh, we'll look for the hepatomegaly. Yes. Uh, any shifting dullness or... Uh, and if you pick the abdomen, yes, okay. Splenomegaly. Splenomegaly, doubtful, okay. Anything else in the abdominal examination? Yes, sir. sir, clinically. Yes, clinically. You are talking the clinically only. Not talking about the, any investigation. Clinically. What other findings you can get in the abdomen of a patient of a cancer breast? The one you said hepatomegaly, second you said ascites, you said splenomegaly, which probably do not agree with that. Can anything happen in the umbilicus? Uh, Sir, so distension of the abdomen or so no, umbilicus inverted. Yes, sir. In the case of cancer stomach, can anything happen in the umbilicus? Sir, spider. In cancer stomach. 
Can you get anything in them like us? Sir, dilated veins will be there. Any sister? Do you know any sister? Sister Joseph sister, Nodule. Sister, uh, yes, sir. Sister Joseph Nodule. Sister Joseph. Right. Anything in the pelvis? Sir, uh, Krupenberg tumor. Yes, Krupenberg. So, who are the ladies who can have the Krupenberg tumor? Uh, sir, when... Yes, sir, the book is written. When the uh, tumor cell metastasizes to the ovary, can uh, stomach cancer? So your lady is a sixty-two years female, is it? Yes, sir. What is, what is the age of your patient? Sixty-two years. Sixty-two years old female. Is she more likely to have a Krupenberg tumor, or if a lady who is thirty-five years will have the Krupenberg tumor? Sir, sixty-two years old female. No, it is the pre. Thirty-two. Thirty-two years old. Young patients are likely to, you know, it can happen in the, okay, it can happen in the older also, but usually it is in the younger one. Yes, sir. Anything else which can happen in the pelvis, which you can get? Sir, in? In the pelvis, as a part of abdominal examination. Sir, uh, in pelvis, plumber shelf not used? Yes, can you can get the blunt. So, these are the five things which you can see. In a patient with cancer breast, hepatomegaly, ascites, Joseph nodule, Krupenberg tumor, and the Blomer shelf. Yes, sir. Right. What can you get in the chest examination in a patient with cancer breast? Uh, sir, cannonball secondaries. Can, uh, we can cannonball, you cannot examine it. Can you examine the cannonballs? No, no, sir. Examination, I'm asking. An examination? Yeah. Sir, consolidation. Yes, there can be consolidation. Anything else? Sir, plural. Yes, yeah, plural effusion. Plural effusion. So, how do you differentiate whether it is consolidation or plural effusion clinically? Uh, sir, by uh, percussing the, the uh, dullness both. of. The so, both will be dull on percussion. Yes, sir. Plural effusion will be also dull and consolidation will also be dull. Yes, sir. Uh, consolidation we can uh, assess or by percussing. No, no, bo but both will be done. Yes, sir. So, how will you differentiate whether it is consolidation or whether it is plural fusion? What further examination you resort to after? Uh. You will do the vocal frameters. Or vocal resonance. Okay. Yes, yes. So vocal parameters and resonance will be increased in case of the consolidation, while it will decrease in the case of the plural effusion. Plural effusion right. Yes, sir. Now, if there's a brain metastasis is there, what can you get? Uh, sir, vomiting. Yes. Headache. Yes. What sir, examination uh, you will do? Examination. Yes. Mm. Patient has got a headache and the vomiting is there. Yes, sir. What examination you will do to know whether the patient has got a brain metastasis or not? How do you look for evidences of why there is headache or why there is vomiting? Okay, you do a fundoscopy, you know? Yes. Okay, so these are three things of the signs of raised intracranial tension. I see. Right? So, you will look for the fundoscopy to see for the peplidema. Yes, sir. Right. Okay. How do you examine the spine of a patient suspected to be a case of cancer breast? If you are suspecting there is a bone metastasis is there, how will you examine? Uh, sir, metastasis in the spine, yeah. Yes, sir. So tenderness, we'll look for the tenderness in the spine. Yeah. Where, where? In the lumbar vertebra. Yes, in the lumbar vertebra, where? Uh, 
know what are various parts of the vertebra the most prominent part is which is the most prominent part of the vertebra on the posterior side sir posterior ligament spinous process spinous process you know so will it be there at the spinous process or not yes sir no it won't be there at the spinous process so we will not press over the spinous process to check for the tenderness but you have to press over the side of the vertebra that is the side of the pedicle of the vertebra yes sir so that is the commonest site of the metastasis any metastasis the commonest site of metastasis is the pedicle yes sir and do you know how does it look like on plain x ray these pedicles like if you take a plain x ray of the lumbar vertebra how does that look like pedicle oh uh, so flat tint okay they are the so round structures yeah, they are called a So uh, it was bull size, you know. They are called a bull size. Yes, sir. So you see the two bull size on either side of the spine, you know. Yes, so sir. that is the pedicle of the vertebra, and that is the site of the metastasis from the any prime digit. Yes, sir. Right. So what are you going to do with this stage now? The patient is stage three A. Yes, sir. How you are going to proceed now? uh sir we'll go for the investigations yes uh which investigation sir uh to support our diagnosis we'll go for the sonomammography bilateral uh, mammography with bilateral axillary uh, high resolution sonography and to confirm the diagnosis stroker biopsy okay always the examiners wants to hear that you will say that i will do a triple assessment yes sir we'll okay. go for so the if triple you use this sir. if you use this word the examiner will be very satisfied to say you know before you so always say that i am going to do a triple assessment for this patient yes, so sir. clinically you have done next what are you going to do after the clinical uh sir a uh, clinical will go for the imaging yes uh, mammograph um Mammography. Then uh, we we'll go for the Crocker biopsy histology. Okay. Why mammography? Uh, sir, mammography. We can uh, see the differentiate from benign and malignant lesions. Yes. In the mammography, or calcifications, we can. What see. are the types of mammography? You know that. Two D and three D. So basically, they are screening mammography and diagnostic mammography. So, yes. what are you going to do here? So, screening, diagnostic. Uh, diagnostic mammography, diagnostic. not the screening mammography. Diagnostic. How many views you will take of the mammography? Sir, so two views: preno-caudal and medio-lateral oblique view. You have a mammogram here. Yes, Just sir. show the mammogram here. Yeah. Just show the mammogram. Right. So, which one is this view? Sir, so preno-caudal. So, how to differentiate whether it is cranio caudal or whether it is a medio lateral? Ah, uh, sir, in med ah uh, cranio caudal we see the ah uh, medial part of the breast, and how do, how do you know where is the medial part? How will you know? I do not know where is the medial part here. Seeing this film. Ah, uh, sir, ah. Uh, Sir, in uh, medial lateral oblique view, we uh, see the axilla and uh, axillary tail so, of spines, and uh, most of the breast tissue can be seen on on the medial. What is the most important structure to say that this is a medial lateral view and this is a cranial caudal view? Axilla. In the axilla, what you will see, you will see something there. Very important thing. Tail of spines. By then, huh? Do you see any marking there? Any special marking, which will be there only in the medial lateral and not in the cranial caudal? Mm. You have that other view also. No, sir. Eh? That is the only view you have. Okay. Yes, sir. 
But if you see the, if it is the medial lateral, you will always see the pectoral muscle there. And in the pectoral region, you will see the axilla. You can see the lymph nodes there. Yes. Okay, so, so if somebody asks you that, how will you differentiate? This is mainly based on the pectoral muscle, which you can see only in the medial lateral and not in the craniopodal tube. Yes, sir. Okay, so what does this show, this mammogram? Uh, sir, there is a heteroechoic lesion in the yes. right in the right upper quadrant of the breast, right breast. Right. So you want to tell anything more in the mammography or just that lesion which is there? Uh, sir, uh, there is hardly visible any calcification. What type of the calcification do you get? Micro calcification in the uh, less than 0.5 mm uh, yeah. uh, in, in the uh, Yes, yes, speculated variety, you know? Yes, sir. Speculated, speculated variety. Yes, okay. sir. What are the other things you are going to see in the mammogram? Uh, sir, margins. Yes. Margins of uh, sir, uh, margin smooth, uh, smooth and uh, density, density, uh, density of the breast can yes. be seen. Uh, sir, hollowness we can see. Uh, sir, in in uh, benignant cases we can see the wide hello, and in the benign we can see the uh, thin hello. Or homogeneity is seen in the uh, benign mammogram, and benignant there is a heterogeneous then uh, heterogeneity. Can test. mammography help you in deciding about that this type of treatment cannot be given to this patient? Can you decide the treatment of the patient? Sir, the it is for the diagnosis. Does it help you in planning the procedures? Sir, is the screening... Uh, no, no, we are not talking the screening here. No, we are talking only the diagnosis. Yes, sir. Like if you get these lesions, one is clinically you are feeling, but there are four or five others which are there scattered all around. Does that make a difference in the treatment planning? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, if we find a lymph node positive. Not the lymph node positive. What are the main surgical treatments of the cancer breast? Main. Uh, sir, firstly, uh, surgery or uh, mastectomy, sir. Either a mastectomy can be done or a breast conservation can be done. Yes, sir. So on mammography, you find there are four or five lesions which are there. Can you yes, do the breast conservation? No, sir. So you cannot do that. You know? So, it also tells you the mammography that is it is very important that it is a unifocal lesion or it's a multifocal lesion. Okay. And then you have to always see for the skin. Yes, sir. Whether there is skin edema is present or not. Yes, sir. Okay, so, that is also one of the things to tell you about the treatment of that patient. So, all these things, information you will get on the mammography. Yes, sir. Right. So, after the mammography, what you have done? What are, the hidden, what are the hidden areas in the mammography? Uh, sir, uh, sir, retro areola revision. Retro the nipple yeah. and um, that is normally in the 2D. So that is why the advantage of the 3D mammography you can go by. Apart from this, any other role of mammography? Sometimes when you are doing for a rapid assessment, the chem chemotherapy when you are giving the response. So the volume of the breast you can measure, the original volume you can take it there. Yes, what will be the finding of lobular carcinoma in mammography? Uh, sir, in lobular carcinoma, uh, sir, there will be micro calcifications, heterogeneity of the breast. That is a normal, you know. In, uh, Ductal what is micro calcification? Sir, micro calcification is a uh, 
small uh, less than 0.5 mm uh, calcified lesions can be seen vacation is this the dystrophic calcification or the hypertrophic uh... sir uh, it is a dystrophic calcification so is it a, what is radial scar radial scar sir sorry so that is also a mammography finding you are going to see okay go ahead ma'am go ahead sir yes. sir can i sir please sir yeah so what next you have done after the mammography uh sir uh, we'll go for the uh, true cut biopsy okay so you have done the true cut biopsy in the biopsy report is uh sir in this patient we uh, advise the patient uh, for the true cut biopsy but the mm -hmm. patient didn't give the consent for it uh, so we uh, went for the fnsc so what do you expect on the true cut biopsy what uh, report will come yes sir uh, in in true cut biopsy uh, lymph lymphovascular channels can uh, we can assess no no what will the first thing pathologist will tell on a true cut biopsy what will the first thing the pathologist is going to tell you why have you done it what is the nature of lesion atypical cells malignant cells highly uh, malignant cells will get get on the true cut biopsy yeah, the first thing he will tell you whether it is a ductal carcinoma or a lobular carcinoma yes, you know sir. the pathologist will also tell you whether it is an invasive carcinoma or whether it is a non invasive carcinoma yes, the sir. third thing they are going to tell that what is the grade of this tumor so there are three most important thing the pathologist is going to tell and then he will tell you about the lymphovascular invasion whether it is present or not and then you have to do certain markers also yes, which markers you are going to do sir erpr and hartinu any other marker which is done now routinely ki 67 sir yes ki 67 so these are the four markers which are done as a routine now jo hai yes. you know what is mama print sir it is also a marker it's also a marker uh, that is not a marker it is a combination of the markers you know there are different types of mama prints are there which may give one may give about 30 markers another may give about 60 markers okay so it's a combination of the various markers which are there which can decide about the prognosis of the patient yes sir okay right so after you have done it has given that this is a patient with a invasive ductal carcinoma and grade is grade 2 yes sir what next you are going to do erpr positive her negative yes sir ki 67 is less than 10% sir uh, we will offer the patient uh, for the uh, breast conservative surgery no no still you are not finished no? have you finished that at the level of the true cut biopsy the work up of a patient with the cancer breast uh sir uh, by the true cut biopsy we were able to know uh, the no, that we have known that is a patient with a carcinoma what yes, next in all cancers you know that is the second stage which comes So you have made a diagnosis so metastatic now. Metastatic workup. Yeah, yeah, metastatic will, workup. Yes. Metastatic workup. Bone scan will go for the uh, and then CCT, thorax, abdomen with pelvis. So and do the bone scan in all cases? No, sir. Breast cancer. No, sir. Which breast cancer you will do the bone scan? Uh, sir, inflammatory. carcinoma breast either the patient is symptomatic for that or yes, the sir. patient is having a symptoms locally advanced breast cancer is there 
or a metastatic breast cancer, not in the early breast cancer. You know? yes, so where does your patient fits? Uh, in the early breast cancer, locally advanced breast cancer, and the metastatic cancer. But in early breast cancer. Dr. Lal, is it okay to say it is the early breast cancer, 3A? I don't know. E3 is there, no? So you have to integrate your uh, diagnosis and then what explanations you give. Okay, locally so advanced breast cancer. So it will be uh, towards the locally advanced breast cancer. Locally advanced, okay. So what other investigation you are going to do? So one, you have done the bone scan. Yes, sir. What other investigations? Uh, sir, uh, to look for the metastasis, we will go for the uh, PET CT. No, PET skin is, CT is not done. Okay. That is not the standard of care. Yes, sir. Even in the eighth edition of the AJCC, it doesn't say that you should do a PET scan. Yes, sir. Okay, so that should uh, not be done. Yeah, no? So you can do X-ray of the chest. Yes, you sir. can do the ultrasound of the abdomen, you can do the CT of the abdomen, you can do the CT of the chest, you can do the liver function test. Yes, sir. So what we liver function, yeah. Can you just share what you did in, did in this case? Uh, sir, uh, we went for the uh, bone scan and... Uh, bone scan, ke pehle chest x-ray hua tha, sonography hua hai ke, sir, yeah, to yes, yes, sir. Uh, we went for the chest x-ray. Uh, it was um, doesn't see, uh, seems any metastasis in the chest X-ray. There were no signs of metastasis in the chest X-ray. Uh, we uh, does the ab uh, USG abdomen. It was also uh, comes out to be normal. And we did the ALP in ALP. What is the significance of the ALP? Sir, uh, ALP uh, is. Uh, so uh, in bone metastasis, uh, ALP is rare. Oh. Sir, so liver and uh, bone, um, both of them. Hmm? Sir, so in bone. Uh, Your connection is not good here. Sir, so ALP uh, is a uh, present uh, increase in bone metastasis and liver metastasis in both the okay. cases. Increase in both cases. So yes, biochemically, how can you say it is the because of liver metastasis or because of sir, bone metastasis? Uh, sir, in bone metastasis, uh, ALP will be heat labile, and in uh, liver metastasis, uh, ALP will be heat stable. Okay. Anything else which you can do in the biochemical examination to say it is the bony metastasis or it is the liver metastasis? We do the serum calcium. Serum calcium. Okay, so if that is raised, it is likely to be right. bone metastasis. Yes, okay. sir. Right, so you have done that. Now, what are the next set of investigations you are going to do after you have done these investigations? You have to do now the basic investigations for planning of the treatment of the patient. Yes, so in sir. any malignancy which is there, these are three set of investigations. First is to make a diagnosis. Second is the metastatic workup. And third is investigations for the treatment of the patient. Yes, sir. Okay, whatever you decide, whether it is a surgery or the chemotherapy or whatever you do. So those are the third set of investigations. So you have done that. Everything is okay. What is your planning now? What is uh, your plan of treatment for this patient? Uh, sir, breath, uh, sir uh, we'll offer the patient new adjuvant chemotherapy okay. uh, for making the uh, Lump size amiable for the breast conservative surgery. But your lump is only 1.7 centimeters, isn't it? And if you look at the tumor to the breast ratio, I yes, think sir. it is quite adequate. Yes, sir. So okay. why you are why, why did, we, the, did we plan sir, for we, this? what we did? You can share your experience of this patient. You are presenting this case. Yes, so sir. first don't give a general discussion, otherwise, the discussion will deviate. Yes, so, sir. what was applicable for this patient? First, you share that, and then maybe lateral discussions. Yes, sir. So we went for the breast conservative surgery. We did lumpectomy with axillary root clearance. 
So what is okay. lumpectomy in a case of a breast conservation? What do you understand by that? Uh, the lump is excised with one mm of margin. One mm. Yes, sir. Okay. You know, understand what is one mm? Yes, sir. One mm or one centimeter. Uh, sir, one centimeter. Why you get a blackout? <laughs> Just relax and tell what you have done. Okay, one centimeter. One centimeter margin. Are you going to excise the skin also or not? Yes, sir. We'll uh, excise the. You will not excise the skin if you are doing the breast conservation. Will not until excise. unless it is getting like there is a tethered is there or dimpling is there, but otherwise you will not excise the skin. Yes, sir. So you will go one centimeter in all the directions. Yes, sir. And when you are removing this lump, how you are going to label the specimen? Uh, sir, uh, will label the axilla? No, no. Specimen. You have done a one centimeter margin and now you want from the pathologist whether any margin is positive or not. So you have to put some markers there. So how will you put the markers? Do you use any thread? It's where you collect the operative experience. <laughs> I think you assisted this case. Yes, sir. So what did we do to the specimen? Did we use some threads to tag it? Yes, sir. Then tell that. Uh, uh, sir, medial border and lateral border. Uh... S S L L. What is S S and what is S L L? S S is short superior. Short superior. And L L is long lateral. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, so sir. you if you keep these two margins, you will know that this is the superior margin and the inferior margin and the medial and the lateral margin. But still, you will not know the anterior and posterior margin. So what you will do for that? D, D. What is D, D? Double on depth. So you will put two sutures on the depth. Yes, sir. Or in case if you have excised the skin, then automatically that will be the anterior and other side will be the posterior. But as I told you, it is not necessary that you should excise the skin. So in that case, you have to put the double suture on the depth. Yes, sir. Okay, so long lateral, short superiors, and double suture on the depth. Right. What yes. other things you have to do when you are doing a breast conservation surgery? You have done the lumpectomy now. Yes, sir. You have sent the specimen now. Yes, sir. Are, what are you going to do the tumor area where you have excised? Sir, we'll uh, go for the adjuvant chemotherapy. No, no. Still, we are on the surgery. Okay. We are still on the operation table. Sir, sentinel lymph node biopsy? No, still for the primary tumor. We are not discussing about the sentinel node. Still on the primary tumor. Anything else has to be done? Mark. Any markers there? Sir, um... you will put the clips there. Because all patient of breast conservation surgery is mandatory to receive the radiotherapy. Yes, sir. Okay, so for giving the radiotherapy, boost has to be given to that area and that is where you have to always put the markers there. And yes, second sir. thing which you can do is the oncoplasty. You know what is oncoplasty? Sir, flap. Uh, flap uh, to raise a flap over the... You know, the purpose of the breast conservation is that the breast should look, look symmetrical. Yes, sir. A good cosmesis. So, yes, if you have removed a centimeter like a big tumor which is there, then there will be a big gap will be there. Yes, sir. So, some type of the oncoplasty has to be done in that area. Yes, sir. 
Okay, so these are the other things which you have to done for the primary tumor. Yes. And then you have to always address the axilla. Yes, sir. And yes. these patients, they will require some type of the sentinel node. Rather yes. than going directly for the axillary clearance, you have to go for the sentinel node in these patients. But in your patient, already the lymph nodes are there, isn't it? Yes, sir. Lymph node was yes. started. Yes. So in those cases, probably in that, this patient, you can go ahead with the axillary clearance. The yes. same incision or you use a separate incision? Uh, with the same incision, sir. Right. You are saying a breast conservation and you are not going to excise the skin. Yes, sir. So it is preferably go by a separate incision tool then. Yes, sir. Will you use a drain? Uh, yes, sir. We'll use a drain. In a breast conservative surgery. Yes, sir. You are not supposed to use a drain. So the serum of formation and the contour maintenance is important for the reconstruction which you are planning for them. Yes, so it's one of the recommendations, you should not use the uh, drain when you are using a breast conservative surgery. Sir, then if uh, seroma uh, developing a lymphedema... Are... Closely dissect. Yes, sir. Be careful. And if there is a seroma formation, it is good. Let, that is what that is kept. Seroma formation will keep the contour of the breast in the later time when you are going for a reconstruction or you are implants you are you going to use, it will help you. Yes, sir. Yeah, Dr. Karnagar, you are, wanted to ask something? No, sir. Okay. So, you have done this. What is the next step? Um, sir, we'll go for the radiotherapy. Yes. Uh, whole breast okay. radiotherapy. So, are, are you, what is the difference between the radiotherapy when you are doing a mastectomy? and a breast conservation surgery. Basic difference, you know, basic difference between when you are doing a modified sir, radical mastectomy. Sir, radiation dose will be uh, lesser in uh, breast conservative surgery as compared to the uh, modified radical mastectomy. So there is not much change in the dose, total dose which is there. It is the, that in the case of modified radical mastectomy, you are not going to give the radiation to the axilla. Yes, sir. But if it is there in the case of breast conservation, then you have to always give the patient, apart from the breast, you have to give the radiation to the axilla and to the supraclavicular nodes and even to the internal memory chain is just to be given. Yes, so, sir. So you have done the ra radiotherapy now, then what next you will do? Are you going to give the patient adjuvant treatment? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, we'll go for the chemotherapy. So, will you give the chemotherapy first or the radiotherapy first? Sir, read, uh, sir do, uh, both are done simultaneously. Sir, you, first... you start with the chemotherapy. You, know? yes, sir. you start with the chemotherapy. Later on, you can give and... the patient the radiotherapy. And after they are finished, then what you are going to do? Um... Sir, there is a site. Uh, sir, we'll give a uh, patient endocrine uh, therapy. It is uh, according to the receptor status. Yes. Uh, if ERPR positive, HRTNU negative, then uh, accordingly, we can give the uh, endocrine therapy to the patient to reduce the estrogen hyperestrogenic state in the patient. How long you are going to give it? How long you are going to give it? Sir, it should be given for a uh, lifetime. No, sir, not the lifetime. You can initially start with the five years, but yes, now sir. it is said that you can go up to the 10 years now. Okay, no? Yes, sir. Okay. I think somebody asked about the internal memory chain. It is always not necessary that internal memory chain has to be radiated in not all, not all cases. Okay. Yes, sir. Why not a modified radical mastectomy in this patient? Uh, sir, patient sir. is... Um, sir, uh, it is uh, always uh, better to go for the best conservative surgery if it is... Uh, patient fits in, into the, uh, this criteria. Because we can uh, preserve the functions of the female, it is always better to preserve it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you can. 
but that is also a choice and it's a 62 years female patient is there so that is also a choice okay you can avoid the side effects of the radiotherapy which is there yes sir to do the message but i do not say that it cannot be done and it can be done both are okay vcs yes, as well as the mrm both are okay yes sir so whenever you, you are doing the mrm you know what are the nerves which you will encounter in the axilla uh yes sir uh uh sir thoracodosal no yes and sir intercostal brachial no yes or uh, long thoracic no yes thoracodosal no you are told or lateral pa lateral pectoral no any other Medial pectoral nerve, lateral pectoral nerve, thoracodosal. Uh... Yes, these are the four internal, nerves. Na? Internal four or sometimes five. You know, sometimes you see only one pectoral nerve. Na? Other pectoral nerve is usually not seen because that is deeply situated. Yes, sir. Right. So, which one you can sacrifice, which you should not sacrifice? Uh, thoracodosal nerve should not be sacrificed. Mm -hmm. Uh, sir, medial and lateral pectoral nerve should not be sacrificed. Yes. And uh, you can sacrifice only one nerve. Internal. Which one is that? Sir, internal intercostal brachial nerve can be co compromised. So that is the only nerve which that you may compromise. sacrifice, but that is also now preserved. So if yes. you sacrifice the intercostal brachial nerve, what happens? Intercostal brachial nerve. Sir, will, it will be the... Uh... Intercostal brachial, right? Yes. Name suggests that here. Brachial means? The hypostasia of the... Yes. Uh, lateral part of, not the lateral part but the medial part of the medial part of the breast upper arm you know? medial part of the upper arm there may be and a cc or the paracecia may be there in that area yes okay so, any other examiner wants or we, we can close here sir I think uh, Kaila sir would you like to give your final comment sir uh, yes, sir. Uh, usually the patients uh, in our region, they come at a late stage, but she relatively came timely, I think, and we could uh, conserve the breast and we have a one year, three months follow up. This lady is doing well and she has gone eight cycles of chemotherapy uh, yesterday follow up when she came in the OPD. So uh, it's one year, three months follow up and she's doing well. Nice to have a follow up patients uh, being presented here, sir. So that will definitely take a different dimension now because one year follow up uh, cases are also being discussed. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, Neha, do you have any questions or any doubts to be clarified? Um. <laughs> sir, no. We have, to read, we have to read a lot. <laughs> sir, Ajay Kenna sir was on the full throttle today. <laughs> yes, sir, yes, sir. A lot of uh, very learning enrichments in here, I think. <laughs> Actually, it was very I'm good flow. I am reminded of my mentors. Sir, I want to ask one thing, sir. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Sir, in uh, when I'm presenting obstructive jaundice case, in examination, is it mandatory? Should I mention about signs of liver cell failure, whether it is present or not? Hundred percent, hundred percent. You say there is no signs of liver failure. Let the examiner take a call on whether they should ask for more questions or not, because evidence of hepatocellular okay. dysfunction has to be mentioned. And you have to be very specific. Okay. Hepatocellular dysfunction is different from hepatocellular failure. The signs of hepatocellular dysfunction okay. is. And signs of hepatocellular failure is different. That that you should mention definitely. 
you have to mention that in the when you are whenever you are thinking there is a lesion you are talking is something related to the liver okay sir. thank you sir but uh, do not tell the individual signs okay if you just no, say no, that is yeah just yes. there are no signs of liver failure the examiner is going yes. to ask you about that so you have the opportunity yes, to get all those questions same right. much all right yes, yeah. but then be prepared with the sequence of uh, answering format because dysfunction question as well as failure question either you go from head to foot or go from mild moderate severe some format has to be there because if you are going to yeah. scramble there and you fumble there see this is a long case presentation how well you take up yeah. to the diagnosis and management makes your success of coming out of the exam with good colors but if you are stuck yes. with hepatocellular dysfunction question then uh, there are the areas where the examiner will never pardon you if you are not sound in that and i also recommend students to go back and refresh your fundamentals of liver physiology how bilirubin gets broken down and all those synthetic functions play at least spend few hours learning about the physiology because many times examiner they just ask to say tell about the intrahepatic circulation so then if you are not able to tell a sequence then it becomes a challenge for all of you so i recommend all the students to be sound on the fundamentals especially hepatocellular function and failures they may ask you child puke c will you be able to go ahead and resect then you should be able to tell what is child puke c so scenarios will be definitely posed by the examiners be prepared for it any other questions or any inputs from other faculty sir no it is absolutely today both the candidates has fairly very uh, done very well very, very good thank you very thank much you, sir. sir thank you for the opportunity the nn das sir uh, kailash sir thank you for joining and uh, <laughs> think karnakaran sir also joined within uh, half an hour or so i also recommend uh, or request all the senior faculty here to permit their pgs to present cases and then we will look forward to have uh, at another session in the coming friday thank you very much and i also inform students you should send uh, abstracts for the national asicon it is getting over by 31st so <laughs> you submit your abstracts either e poster or regular paper or free paper it is uh, it is definitely prestigious one to present paper in the national asicon so ensure you submit your papers because they are not going to extend because last year itself they had 4600 papers this year it may be even more so do not miss a chance in submitting the abstracts Good luck to all of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you with the permission of.